Fayetteville, Arkansas, where tonight it's the Western Athletic Conference against the SEC. The Boise State Broncos with a 1-0 record thanks to a 38-21 win last week against the Idaho Vandals against the Razorbacks of Arkansas. It's been a warm day here in Fayetteville in the 90s, but it has cooled off enough to be a beautiful night for college football. Hi, everybody. Wayne Dizou back along with Larry Palowski. Welcome again to the Bronco Television Network. You know, Boise State has been knocking on the door of the top 25 for about, what, three years now. But to get there, they've got to win a game like this. Well, most of the impact players for this team this year have played either in Arkansas two years ago or at South Carolina last year. It's time for a breakthrough. It's time to start playing like they deserve a spot in the top 25. You talk about one of those impact players. you got to talk about Brock Forsey. He's been doing everything this year. Brock Forsey is the only one of two Broncos to ever rush and receive for over 1,000 yards in a season. He will be a workhorse tonight. Defense could be a question for Boise State. Can they stop Arkansas? One guy that's going to have to get the job done, Julius Brown. Julius Brown is probably the most improved defensive back in a very good Bronco defensive backfield. This kid has really improved on breaking on the ball and can make the big interception. We mentioned this is the first game for we mentioned this is the first game for Arkansas for the new season. It's also the first start for quarterback Matt Jones. First start, but what a great athlete. Not only does he start at quarterback for the Razorbacks, he also gets some playing time on their basketball team. So this kid likes to run the option. He's a good athlete. Talk about the Arkansas defense. you got to talk about their secondary. Their DBs are great, and we picked on Lawrence uh, Richardson. Yeah, absolutely. There's three or four back there we could talk about. Lawrence Richardson, very quick guy, but maybe, just maybe, one, one guy that the Broncos might be able to make some way with today. As always, uh, Roman to sidelines for us here on the Bronco Television Network, the third member of our broadcast team, Jeff Caves. Jeff? Well, well Wayne, they're going to hear this noise quite a bit. There's also been a change. Bobby Hammer is starting a defensive end instead of Julius Roberts as they try to defend against that big wall for Arkansas. So keep an eye on the Boise State D. Wayne? All right, there you go. Already the Broncos thinking about this game. Let's talk about the overhead door keys to the game, Bo. Well, Wayne, I think offensively, the first thing we need to look at today, if the Broncos come out and can score on that first drive and get the Razorbacks back on their heel, they're going to be in good shape. Defensively, they need to score some points, or at the very least, they need to turn the ball over back to the offense and get this Razorback offense off the field. All right, the Boise State Broncos facing another team from a power conference, as they call them. The Broncos are over. 10 against those kind of teams. They need to have a breakthrough. Will it happen here tonight? We'll find out when we return. Hi, my name is David Michael, the Boise State football team. I am here in my favorite place in Broncos Stadium, the end zone. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, touchdown! <laughs> David Michael! Let me tell you about the Pick 3 mini plan. To three of the five remaining home games, Utah State, Hawaii, Fresno State, Rice, Louisiana Tech, and pay only $72 and get two tickets to each of the games. There's no doubt where I'd be on Saturday. The Pick 3 Mini Plan, three games, 72 bucks, two tickets to each game. Welcome to a rockin' Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas, everybody. Wayne DeZubak, Larry Falowski with you, and I mean, it is rockin'. The weather is beautiful. It's 89 degrees, but it actually doesn't feel that bad because it was about 95 earlier, and the humidity is low for Arkansas. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a breeze, too, which helps calm us down a little bit. But what a beautiful day for football. The crowd has filed in here, and there is a sea of red across this field as the captains meet at midfield. See who's going to take that ball first. And they are excited to get their football season underway here in Fayetteville. They've been waiting. Of course, Boise State opened a week ago. You saw it here on the Bronco Television Network beating Idaho 38-21. But for Arkansas, this is their season opener, and they're ready to go. Had some interesting discussions with some of the Razorback fans that we saw last night, kind of roaming around town a little bit. Very realistic group, but very excited for this season to get going. They think they've got a lot of opportunities waiting for them out there. All right, Arkansas Razorbacks, they're 83-21-4 and four in their season openers, and under Houston Nutt, he has not lost a, an opener yet since he's been the head football coach here at Arkansas. Of course, the former Bronco coach, Houston Nutt, coached Boise State back in 97 for one year, came down here, and a lot of people were upset when he left, but who can blame him? I mean, he came down here. This is a great opportunity for him. It's his home state. He played here. This is where he wants to be, and I'll tell you, this is a facility second to none. Oh, any coach would salivate for the opportunity to come to a program like this. I mean, this facility that we're in right now is the Taj Mahal. It's the, you know, it's what most programs aspire to, and there's probably only maybe 25 or 30 programs in this country that really have a facility like this. Now, yeah, there's the Houstonator right there. Now let's go down to Jeff Caves on the sideline. Jeffrey. Hey, you guys are bragging about the facility. What about the number of people here? And it's not a sellout. It's still about the fourth largest city in the state of Arkansas. On top of that, though, Boise State had a pretty good season ticket campaign, trying to get to 13,000. There's 62,000 season ticket holders. That means about 3,000 walk-up. 
Not a bad day, Wayne. Uh, not a bad day at all. Here's Dan Hawkins in the second season with the Broncos, nine and four. Got this season off to a good start last week. Yeah, very uh, disappointed that they were not able to get into a bowl opportunity last year with an eight and four record, tied for second in the WAC. But that did not happen. Now, this year, the theme of Dan Hawkins' team, leave no doubt. Tonight would be a great start in leaving no doubt. Well, there you see David Michael getting ready to return a kickoff here. This first half kickoff brought to you by your neighborhood Pizza Hut restaurant. Pizza Hut, the best pizza under one roof. Pizza Hut. We are getting ready to go. Get this thing underway. Boise State to receive. David Carlton will be kicking it off. And Brock Forsey and, as I mentioned, David Michael. Standing deep in the road end zone. The breeze, what there is, is to the kicker's back. So he should be able to boom this thing. And we are underway here in Fayetteville. Keeps it low. It'll take a bounce. Jumps up right to David Michael at the three-yard line. Michael, who broke one for 99 yards two years ago, gets it out to the 26-yard line. And they remember that. That's probably why they squibbed it. Yeah, they absolutely do remember it. We've had some great video of that. Been replaying that for quite some time with David Michael going down the sidelines on a 92 or 93-yard kickoff return. Now David Michael normally in the backfield with Brock Forsey. He's off to the sidelines, so we'll see what Boise State does. They're going to bring out the extra receiver for this first start. Brian Dinwiddie, the 6'1 junior. Here you see what he's done on the year. That's pretty much what he did last week. 259 yards passing and a touchdown. And Dinwiddie with Rock Forsey, the lone setback. Jay Swilly in motion. They fake it. And Dinwiddie's going to be sacked. For the first play of the game, Brian Dinwiddie goes down. That's Caleb Miller, number 43, that makes the sack as we take a look at our Tom Scott Motors starting lineups. The offensive front for the Broncos, the same as what started last week against Idaho. Colidge and Coburn, the new guys. Forzy, Michael, the workhorses in the backfield. Wingfield, Swilly, and Atkinson, be the receivers. Swilly, no catches last week. So a big loss. Boise State now. Back all the way to their 18-yard line. Second down and 17. Dinwiddie has the time, throws to an open Swilly, and he's right near the first down marker. And they're going to mark it for a first down. So Jay Swilly, his first reception of the year, is for a first down. And I guess that's why they call him first down Swilly. Well, Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator for the Broncos, told me earlier in the week that they had some things designed to get Jay Swilly into the game. He's had a little bit of a groin problem. Our Tom Scott Motor starting lineup on the uh, defensive front here. See the linebackers. Miller with that sack just a minute ago. Tony Boo is a good one, too. And then they are have all kinds of speed in that defensive backfield. So first down for Boise State to pitch out Brock Forsey. Cutting up. He draws a crowd, but he gets about three near the 40-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 39. This defensive front for Arkansas provides so many different looks. They will have seven guys on the line, eight, nine, maybe even 11 guys in the box. It is absolutely helter-skelter on defense and very confusing for offensive coordinators to put a game plan together. But the Broncos have got a few plays, and they've got a few wrinkles they may throw in this week, too. And a pretty big defense, too. You saw Jermaine Brooks a moment ago. He's 6'3", 310-pound senior. Wears number 48. Wears it proudly and big. Inside handoff to Brock Forsey. He's going to get out to about the 43-yard line, so it'll be third down and three for Boise State. But again, Brock Forsey, Broncos trying to do what they do best and go with the power. Ken Hamlin, number six on that tackle. The first guy there, but it took two to bring him down. Really did. You mentioned Tony Bua. He was the other guy that came over and helped Hamlin. So Dan Hawkins looking at a third down, the first third down of the night. It's right at the 34-yard line. Excuse me, the 44-yard line. From the shotgun, Dinwiddie. Runs out of there and no place to go. His man won open to the right, and just great pressure from that Arkansas defense. And it looks like Bua got in there again, along with uh, 43. That's Caleb Miller, who we've called his number a couple of times. Well, they came with the blitz that time. You can see Miller coming up the middle. Bua's coming off the left side. And Miller again, right there on the spot. The pocket broke down. Dinwiddie really didn't have much he could do. You can see him get flushed out of that pocket right now. Fourth down. And here's one of those things we're talking about. As you can see, Dinwiddie still in the ball game now. 
This he, is the wrinkle we were talking about. Yeah, right but here. expect Dinwiddie to punt. And it's blocked. Scooped up. And that's going to be a touchdown for Arkansas. It's Bo Mosley. Bo Mosley with a touchdown. I'm not sure who got the block, Wayne. But Mosley got the ball, picked it up, so the little wrinkle the Broncos put in. That's Bua yeah, coming Bua right, right up the middle. middle. Man, I tell you what, nobody got him, and then when he put it right between the two and a two, and it's 6 nothing, just like that. So the Broncos needed to start fast, and they are not starting fast at all. Brennan O'Donohue will come out and try the extra point. And he is true. So it didn't take long. Just like that with 11.38 to go here. In the first quarter, a black punt. And Arkansas is on the board as they lead the Broncos 7-0. Well, I'm sure that that was not the way that that quick punt was designed to go. Bua coming right up the middle, absolutely untouched to get that block and the touchdown. Remember two years ago, Wayne, 24 to nothing hole the Broncos dug for themselves before coming back to tie it up. Well, I've got to tell you why Dinwiddie was punting. Of course, it all happened so fast. Uh, but the bottom line is that, of course, Keith Shuttler was hurt earlier in the year. He's the normal, normal punter. And then they had to go to uh, Sean Steichen. Sean Steichen's got a big dislocated toe. And as a result, they were down to like the third and fourth guys just trying to ask anybody punt. Has anybody ever punted? And they threw in that wrinkle this week that you saw with uh, Ryan Dinwiddie. Yeah, and the theory being that if the defense doesn't react like it should, you could throw a pass out of that formation. But at fourth and eight, that becomes a little bit problematic sometimes. And he's only lined up 10 yards deep. So the ability to block that thing, if you don't get a, a good solid body on those middle rushers, is obviously something that's very easy to do. So for the second time and as many times, Boise State comes to Arkansas and falls behind. As I already mentioned that they got behind 24-0 two years ago, but you know what? You, you don't want to roll that dice too many times. No, I don't think they want to have to come back from a 24-0 deficit tonight. Absolutely not. So here we go. Second time tonight that David Carlton was going to kick off. And this one, like I said, as I mentioned... And it goes right through the upright, so he was right on target. But as I mentioned, with that win, he can really get a booming kickoff. Yeah, man, right through the uprights and right into the Razorback inflatable tunnel that's right behind the end zone where the Razorbacks come flying out of before the game. So far, everything going right for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Well, the only good news for your offense is they get to come right back onto the field and see if they can establish a drive and get those seven points back that they gave away on that fake or on the blocked punt. So Broncos come back again, minus David Michael in the backfield. Got Max Drovis at fullback, Brock Forsey the running back. And again, the play action fake. Looking wide open, and that's complete to Billy Wingfield for a first down out at the 39 yard line. Working on cornerback Ahmad Carroll, number eight on that right hand side, eight against eight. Billy Wingfield, we talked about last week during the Idaho game, a kind of a breakout spring and fall for this young man. Very enthused about being a football player right now, which was not always the case for him in his earlier days. Very quick secondary for Arkansas, and so the Broncos throwing underneath. Probably will not have too much luck going deep in this ball game, and as you can see, Brock Forsey not having too much luck going up the middle on that one, just buried right there at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Raymond House, the nose guard, was in there along with a couple of others. Justin Scott, number 90, also in on that play. Very mobile front, especially the linebackers. We've seen Miller, we've talked about Bull, but that front four, too, is pretty tough. They actually play kind of a 3-4 defense, but they have all different kinds of alignments. You will see there's really no way to chart exactly what they do because they do so many different things. Johnny Heck in there, running back right now. Brock Forsey, wide out to the left. And look at this. Boy, I'll tell you what, absolutely no chance. Richard Ahmad Carroll, rather, with a corner blitz. He comes in and he just knocks him down. Nothing that really Ryan Dinwiddie could do. Never saw him coming. 
Now he's looking left, looking left, and you see Carroll coming off the corner, and he was coming in, in a big hurry, a corner cat blitz for the Razorbacks. So now the Broncos face with a third down and long. Third down, 14, the ball just shy of the 35-yard line. There's, they call him Batman. Mod Batman Carroll. That time he was playing Batman. He had his cape on and the whole thing. Dinwiddie in the pocket. Nobody to throw to. And that's a coverage sack right there. Gavin Walls made the play, but I tell you, the secondary gave him nowhere to go. A very concerned Dan Hawkins roaming the sideline. Let's take another look. A five-step short roll to the left. And again, nobody to throw to immediately. And Dinwiddie flushes out of the pocket because it collapses on top of him. So now Cam Hall will punt. He's the guy we thought was going to punt. Didn't think we'd see that wrinkle so soon. We didn't really have a chance to talk about it. Cam, not a bad punt for the first time under pressure. A lot of hang time and gets a little bit of a good bounce. So Arkansas will have it at the 32-yard line. And we'll get to see Matt Jones at quarterback for the first time. 7-0, Arkansas on a block punt, scooped up for a touchdown. They lead it here in Fayetteville. Well, stay tuned towards the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery. Lucky play of the game will feature one of today's top plays, sponsored by the Idaho Lottery, encouraging players everywhere to score big. Our score here in Fayetteville, 7-0 Arkansas. The block punt scooped up by Mosley, taken in for the touchdown. Broncos having problems with the punting, because as we just told you, the number one punter is hurt. The number two punter got hurt, so they tried something goofy, and it turned out to be pretty goofy with Ryan Dinwiddie trying to punt it away. It was something we saw in practice this week. Didn't think we would see it so early in the game. Thought we'd have a little bit more time to kind of set the stage for you because we were told Cam Hall would punt, and that's, of course, what he did the second time. Here we are, Matt Jones, at quarterback, and Cedric Cobbs, the running back. And Jones, who'd worked on his passing all summer long, looking to throw, has to run out of there. He's a great runner, by the way, and he just keeps going. Look at him. Broncos missing one tackle after the other, and finally they get him down for a three-yard gain. All that running for three yards. Here's the Tom Scott starting lineup for the uh, offensive line for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and they've got a pretty big one. They go out at about, what, 308 pounds, I think. Yeah, look at the size of Andrews at that right tackle spot, 6'5", 330. <laughs> My look goodness. Eats a lot of burgers, no question about that. Cedric Cobbs, the running back, told you about him. He's a good one, but he's had uh, some injuries, and... He ran for 174 yards against Boise State the first time these two teams met back in 2000. And here he comes again, right up the middle. Almost busted at that time, save for an arm tackle. He would have been gone. Andy Avalos was the guy who had an arm on him in the defense for Boise State. Again, the Tom Scott Motors starting lineups. And as we talked about a late substitution where Hammer moves to the end position. Cameron Merritt, Akko, and Avalos at the linebacker spot. Boy, they are going to have a lot of pressure on them today. Michael Nurse, Franklin, and Brown in that defensive backfield. Ahmad Carroll comes wide to the near side. This time they go right at the middle again to Cobbs. After that first down run, he gets a couple on this first down play. Cobbs picked up some weight, too, since two years ago when we saw him last. He's up to the 225 range. Very strong runner. He'll share time with Fred Talley, number 20, at the tailback spot. But this guy is a very talented, talented tailback. You know, Fred Talley, maybe a lot of people feel a little better than Cobbs, but these two both have had their injuries, and Talley right now is the one that's got a little bit of a shoulder problem. He may not see any action at all tonight. So Cobbs could be playing a lot, and uh, the area is Howard to be backing them up. But right now, Cobbs is in there. It's second down and eight for the Razorbacks. And we got a whistle. And we got a timeout. Arkansas a little bit confused on something on offense, and that sometimes happens when you're playing your first game of the year. There were some question marks, so they call timeout. So timeout as Dan Hawkins considers his lottest team down 7-0 here with 7.04 to go in the first quarter from Fayetteville. Coming up later on our broadcast, we're going to show you the Jiffy Lube drive of the game. This special feature is brought to you by Jiffy Lube, your locally well-oiled machine. Jiffy Lube.
Arkansas leading it by a score of 7 nothing here thanks to this block right there by Boa and then Mosley scoops it up and takes it on in the rest of the way 7 nothing in favor of Arkansas here in the first quarter Boise State has had to punt a second time and now Arkansas face with a second down and eight Wayne, our uh, viewers that might not have caught the Idaho game last Saturday in your upper right-hand corner, compliments to the Idaho Lottery is our new clock box with scoreboard, clock, and down in distance. Ball at the 46-yard line, second and eight for the backs. Jones fakes the option, spins a couple of times, gets to the 49-yard line. That'll be a pickup of three, and it'll be third down in about five. Dane Oldham in on that tackle. Good job of the Bronco defensive front stringing that option out. They played Matt Jones very well. He's going to want to keep the ball as much as possible. This guy runs the option very well, but he likes to run it himself. You see there, he had an option to pitch, did not. West Nurse gets a first hit. Oldham finishes it up along with Travis Berger, and Travis Berger will be instrumental in that option play, too. All right, from the shotgun now, Matt Jones. Looking, throws underneath the coverage, incomplete. That was intended for Ahmad Carroll, or Richard Smith, rather. They got two number eights, I apologize. Richard Smith is the flanker. And the Razorbacks will be forced to punt. Richie Butler, probably one of the top punters in the nation. At least he's on that Ray Guy Award watch list. There you see Houston Nutt. They got a lot of guys on a lot of watch lists, but you know what? That's interesting that Boise State's got a bunch. Of, they've got four, and Boise State has four, and the Razorbacks have six, I believe, that are on different preseason watch lists, and you can see why he's on the Ray Guy. That takes a backspin, and the Broncos are going to start it at about the seven-yard line. Well, that's a nice punt right there because there was wind and everything, but Richie Butler does a good job of getting it down inside the 10-yard line. Boise State its own seven when we come back. Down 7-0 here in Fayetteville. It is 7-0 Arkansas here, 6.09 to go in the first quarter. And the story of the first quarter, besides the block punt, has really been the pressure on Dinwiddie. Yeah, this is the uh, Razorback sack attack we're taking a look at right now. Ed Miller, then Carroll. That's something that Chris Strasser is going to be very happy with in regards to that offensive line. But re remember, two new tackles in that situation right there. In college, you're looking at one of them, and Colburn, the other guy, two brand new guys that had their first test of battle in a starting role against Idaho last week. This team is in Idaho. Well, and the key for Boise State right now is trying to get some kind of an offensive drive going. Even if you don't score, take some time off the clock, move the football, get some confidence, get a feel for this stadium, the crowd. Wingfield in motion. He's got it on the end around. Billy Wingfield cutting up. He's close to the 20-yard line. Billy Wingfield has a first down, a gain of about 11 yards. Jeff Caves, what do you have for us? Wayne, you called that Sean Steichen's got a bad toe. Didn't even make the trip here to Fayetteville, so it forces Boise State to go with a walk-on from Bishop Kelly, a sophomore, in uh, Jesse Warner. Jesse apparently walked on at BSU. He was a kicker and a running back. He ends up with the punting duties in front of 65,000. So it's a big story. Stay with us. Yeah, it is a big story. It's turned into seven points already. And but a big first down for Boise State on the end around with Billy Wingfield, and now they've got uh, David Michael in the backfield. Pass complete. I believe that's Jay Swilley. Jay Swilley is second reception of the night, and he may have another first down. Jay Swilley is nursing a little bit of a muscle tear or a muscle problem in his groin, and he, one of the reasons he didn't do much last week against Idaho, but he's ready to go today. And there's number one against number one, Swilley against Richardson. Richardson, one of the guys we profiled earlier in the game. And Swilly ran a great route. Look at him run right for the marker there. He's got a first down. So Jay Swilly, two catches, two first downs. Stretch handoff there to David Michael. Michael trying to follow his blocking, gets a couple. This defense is so mobile, Wayne. I don't think Boise State's going to have a lot of luck with that kind of a play to the outside. Although the, the uh, end around to Wingfield worked pretty effectively. These guys are so quick and so fast, they're going to react to the ball. I think maybe quick hitters up the middle, off tackle, something hitting the line of scrimmage quick or even a delay to the line of scrimmage. We saw a fast Jimmy Beasley, the strong safety, got to that play. In and two, though, second down and eight. Broncos come with trips to the near side. So the five receivers in the package right now. Here comes the blitz. They throw the screen up the middle. It is complete. And that, I think, is Wingfield again. Well, that's one way you get people out of the blitz. 
The screen pass is very effective in offensively moving the ball against a blitzing team. And you can see right now, Arkansas is going to send them often, and they're going to send them many times tonight. The blitz is definitely part of the package for Arkansas. Well, a couple of years ago, I don't think they took Boise State all that seriously until it was almost too late. The Broncos had come back. They now have a lot of respect for the Broncos, and, and that's in a good in one way and tough in the other way because they're coming right after BSU. But it's a third down and three. Handoff. Brock Forsey up the middle. Wow, what a nice counteraction play there. He gets into the 43-yard line first down. Again, those quick hitters, a little bit of misdirection. That will help a team that pursues. You see the man uh, look like Gilligan was the man in motion. They fake the handoff to him, and then they slash it back to Forsey coming across the formation. Well, let me tell you something. If Ken Hamlin doesn't make that shoestring stop, Brock Forsey's gone. And that's a big safety out there, Wayne. 6'2", 205 at the strong safety spot. So the Broncos are the first down at the 43 now. Forsey has it again. Cuts against the grain. Brock Forsey, maybe nine, close to ten yards on that play. Got in behind that big wall of offensive linemen. Picked his way through there. Excellent vision by Brock Forsey. Let's take a look at it here. You can see the linemen pulling to the left. Good block there by Coolidge. Did a good job creating a hole for Brock to run through. But just good patience on Forsey's part to wait for his linemen. Now they're going to measure this thing. It was that close. Brock Forsey, last Saturday against Idaho, averaged nearly five yards a carry, and he's got a first down here. Good drive so far for the Broncos. They really need a drive like this to culminate in some points to get their heads back in this game. Nothing is shocking to an offense than to turn the ball over and have your defense score six on you. Takes a while to overcome that. Tim Gilligan, Chase Willie from wide right. Forsey, the lone setback. Michael's got everybody on the offensive line to block. Strophus and Atkinson in at the tight end spot. Swilly knocked away at the last second. Pretty good play there by Lawrence Richardson. Swilly's a little ding. He looks a little hurt running back to the huddle. Watch the strip of the arms by Richardson, number one at the cornerback spot on number one, Swilly. See him strip those arms down, and then Swilly comes down hard. Yeah, that, when you hit that turf, I don't care how soft that grass is, that hurts. Yeah, he checked out of the lineup. So Lou Fanuki is in there now. Billy Wingfield comes near to the right side. Max Strophus in at fullback. Strophus leading the blocking. That's David Michael fumbles the football, and Arkansas has recovered at the 46-yard line. How about that? Ken Hamlin with a recovery. Well, I don't know who strips it out of there. The play was ran off the right tackle. Strophus is the lead blocker. Let's see where this ball comes out. Tony Bua makes the hit and strips the ball right there. You can see his left arm get in there and rip the ball out of Michael's hands. Look at the quick reaction from Hamlin. So, Matt Jones back in there. Play action fake, rolls right, looking long. Caught! That is Richard Smith with the catch. Very acrobatic catch by Richard Smith. Pretty decent coverage by Gabe Franklin. And that pass was thrown a little bit high, but really in perfect spot for Smith to go up and get it. Gabe Franklin getting picked on there a little bit. Idaho picked on him last week for a while, but then he came up with a big interception, almost ran it back for a TD. Here you see Richard Smith last year. This is their first game, so that was his first catch of the season. Cedric Cobbs. Still on his feet. Steps out of bounds at about the nine-yard line. That's going to be a first down. It'll be a first and goal to go. Broncos not making the tackle to the line of scrimmage. Cobbs coming at you here. Gets tripped up by Nurse, but excellent job of regaining his balance, and then he just can't quite tightrope that sideline before Quentin Michael gets over there. Here's another look at it. That's a great move. Just can't quite keep his balance. 
So first and goal to go for Arkansas. Boise State, I believe, has called a timeout. Dan Hawkins is all the way out on the field. And we've got a player down. That's what it is. I couldn't see it. We had camera people right here. Tony Altieri. Tony Altieri is down. Yep. That's who it is. I did not see him. Sorry. They've got a photo deck right out in front of us. Some of the cameras stick out a little bit. Could not see Tony down out there. That was the problem. And Hawk very concerned about that. Obviously, we chronicled the neck injury that he had last year against Rice. Thought it might be a career ender. Hawk ran all the way across the field to see how his defensive tackle was. So first and goal for Arkansas. Flags fly. New running back in there was Brandon Holmes. Let's check out the laundry and see what it is. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. So a black punt and then a fumble. And Arkansas making things happen here. Our Sinclair Oil scoreboard for you tonight. Some of the scores from around the country. Fourth quarter, Oklahoma, Alabama in a tussle. So it's first down and goal to go. Jones almost falls down, keeps his balance, throws it, complete touchdown. A good job by Mac Jones. And then he just kept his balance and he found a man wide open. And that is Mark Pierce, the fullback. Mark Pierce, six footer, 240 pounder, primarily used as a blocker, showing a little bit of versatility as a receiver. And the Broncos lost him in the shuffle there. Watch Jones, he almost falls down coming out of there. He gains his balance, but there's really nobody out there. Julius Brown way too late, but I don't think Julius Brown probably not responsible for the fullback coming out of the backfield anyway. Yeah, and the kick is good. Both teams have 76 yards in total offense. The difference, though, Arkansas has 14 points. Not much Julius Brown's going to do with the 240-pound fullback. Catches the ball with a little bit of a head of steam, and Julius can't get him. Almost a disaster for Arkansas. Jones almost fell down get, coming out of center. Yeah, Matt Jones, the guy that made that happen because he maintained his balance and was able to get the ball to Pierce for the touchdown. And the Broncos again in a big hole again in Arkansas. Well, if you could have drawn up the game plan for what you did not want to have happen, the Broncos are executing that one pretty well. They've had two turnovers. They've both resulted in points for the Razorbacks. And now it's almost imperative to get this offense going. Brock Forsey set to return this kickoff along with David Michael. Well, once again, we've got David Carlton, the kicker. Southmore getting ready to boot it away. First time he squibbed it. Second time he kicked it out of the end zone through the uprights. Let's see what he does the third time. Probably won't be long before we see the kickoff and college football move back to the 30. I mean, these kids are just so strong. You saw how far out of the end zone he kicked the last one. kick and this one's really floating back there and Brock Forsey takes a knee eight yards deep the Broncos will start at the 20. Smart play by the senior Brock Forsey very intelligent football player too not only very gifted and talented now it's time for another gifted and talented guy and Ryan Dinwiddie to lead this team down the field. Ryan's pretty much unshakable. I mean, he just keeps coming and coming and coming. You can see he's four out of five for 53 yards, despite the fact he's been sacked three times here tonight already. So he doesn't let it bother him too much. And save for the turnovers, Boise State's playing pretty even here, but they count two, and it's 14 nothing. Dinwiddie. Throwing over the middle. Wingfield, let's see. Simultaneous possession. It'll go to the Broncos. Winfield has it. Absolutely. Simultaneous possession. Winfield doing a great job of battling for that ball. 
and he he made this play happen by his desire to maintain control of the ball. Dinwiddie gets hit by Miller again, but the best part of the play is the isolation play that we've got here on Wingfield. Watch him battle for this ball as he's running the post route. Took it right away from him. They both had it, but you got to hang on and the simultaneous possession goes to the offense. It's in the rule books. Still a nice play by Eddie Jackson, the defensive back. So the Broncos with a big first down. This is Tim Gilligan running the end around. Gilligan steps it up and, oh, I tell you, he got plowed under like a snowman. He got turned around and looked around, and he should, didn't like what he saw what was coming. Yeah, what he saw coming was probably <laughs> what nightmares are made of. But, hey, Tim Gilligan's used to nightmares. The, some of the hits he's taken on punt returns. The end around again, Billy Winfield ran out the last time he got around the corner. This time they don't quite make the corner. Caleb Miller does a great job of holding up the end, and then Hamlet comes over to finish him off along with Jimmy Beasley. You know, these deep defensive backs for Arkansas, they can really put a hit on you. That's one of the things I've seen here tonight. They're pretty big. Yeah, they're hitters. In a two. Here comes the blitz. I think that's Bua. Tony Bua one more time coming on a delayed blitz. Sacks Dinwiddie for the fourth time and the Broncos are back at midfield with the third down at about 16 now. Strophus takes the wrong guy. Got two guys coming at him. He chose the outside guy. Let Bua go on the inside. And he just crit, just killed Ryan Dinwiddie, just blindside. Well, you see, you didn't see this two years ago from Arkansas because they pretty well figured they didn't have to do this against Boise State to win. Then they figured out, well, wait a minute, maybe we do. Tonight, they're coming right after him. Well, one thing, thing we saw two years ago also was when Bart Hendricks finally figured it out, he ran for a lot of yardage. Dinwiddie may have to resort to that at some point, too. Third down at about 16. The screen. That's Brock Forsey looking for some help. Doesn't get a lot of help. And there's a flag down. Maybe that'll help. It looked like there may have been a face mask. Let's check out the flag. Let's take a look at this. Again, when you blitz, 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 you're going to get draws. You're going to get screens. Again, Forsey very patient, waiting for blockers to get... Incidental field. face mask foul on the defense. And he'll get another five, five yards from the end of the run. Repeat third down. So repeat third down. Yeah, that's a that's the nice part about that play. That's a big gainer anyway, plus the five yards. Let's see if we can see the face mask. Yeah, there's Caleb Miller. Just a little bit of it, but yeah, that's all it takes. Now there wasn't much there, was there? You, you really can't even tackle the head gear. Yeah. I mean that's that's a penalty in itself. They don't call it very often. You know, from up here, it looked like he got the face mask. Then you look at the replay again, you see that there wasn't, and Boise State's upset because they've got to waste the time out here. They're not ready to rock and roll with the third down and four. Didn't have the proper personnel in there. Ryan Dinwiddie walking over to talk with Dan Hawkins about things here in Fayetteville. We haven't quite gotten through a quarter yet, but Dinwiddie's had his share of Razorbacks on his back. Hey, hey. Nebraska taking on Utah State. And Utah State, as you can see, hanging in there. Washington and San Jose State today. Our BTV Update scoreboard is brought to you by Sinclair Oil. Look for the sign of the big green dinosaur and fill up with Sinclair. Stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We'll have all the scores and the highlights of today's college action. It is the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes. Scores and highlights. Look at that big screen in the background. That is, it, somebody told me it was the biggest one, pro or college or anywhere. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's pretty darn big. Yeah, and it, the picture on this thing is just incredible. And the picture on the screen at uh, Bronco Stadium, the new Bronco Vision screen, very nice. But this thing, look how wide that is. I mean, that is a huge picture. And underneath that scoreboard is the athletic training center and the locker rooms and the coaches' offices. Quite a facility they have built here. All right, the Broncos come on. They're facing a third down and a long four. Coming out in the I-4 major, Brock Horsey, the running back. 
Brent Lundin, the tight end in motion. Dinwiddie running for his life, trying to get outside, and he's going to get sacked. Ryan Dinwiddie was looking for Billy Wingfield. He had double coverage. There's no way he could get it to him. And now the Broncos are going to have to punt again because they lost a ton of yardage. Even if he could have gotten it, I mean, there was great coverage, but he didn't have time to set up and throw. You bet. And he's running the wrong way. And Beasley just tracks him down. He's not going to outrun this guy. Nope. So the Broncos will have to punt here, and they're getting ready to punt. And we'll be back in just a moment as we finish one quarter of play, 14 up in Arkansas. Well, we have played a quarter here in Fayetteville, and it's been all Arkansas. Not necessarily in yardage. Boise State with 102 total yards to 78 for Arkansas, but the turnovers have killed Boise State. Let's go down to Jeff Caves on the sideline. Jeff? You know, there has been some frustration setting in on the Boise State sideline. You're going to see Chris Carr in there, and they're just trying to give West Nurse a blow. Key defensively for BSU is they've got to tackle better. They want them to settle down, get in position, and wrap up these guys so they don't get the extra yards. Wayne? All right, thank you very much. This time we do have Warner in there kicking, Jesse Warner. Warner. And he gets knocked down flag. Nice little punt taken by Richardson inside the 10, and he gets it out to the 18-yard line, but let's check the flag, and there's no question that Warner was run into. But was the punt blocked? Because if there was a tip of that ball, then he's legal tender back there. They can do whatever they want to him. Let's see if we can see the ball tipped here, because that will eliminate the penalty. Nope, ball was not touched, but he was. And that's got to be rough in the kicker, first down. Talking to Matt Strophus. If they call it running into the kicker, the Broncos would have to punt again, and I don't know if they want to do that. I think they'd rather give Arkansas the ball at the 18-yard line. Yeah, they're going to decline it. So it was running into the kicker, not roughing the kicker. Running into the kicker on the defense. The penalty is declined. It'll be first down. Broncos do not want to punt again no matter what. And, of course, roughing the kicker would have met an automatic first down. So the Bronco defense comes back out there here in the second quarter. As I mentioned, the stats kind of look a little bit in favor of Boise State, except for the rushing yards, but that's not even that bad. Total offense, 102 to 76, but the turnovers won officially. But to me, in my book, block punts a turnover. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And five sacks by Arkansas has yeah. just devastated any drive that the Broncos have been able to put together. So the scoreboard is the biggest stat of all. And I believe we got a new quarterback in there now. We do. Hand off to Cedric Cobbs. We knew that we would probably see Tavares Jackson. And he is in there. Houston not a proponent of being able to shuffle quarterbacks in and out. And Jones and Jackson are going to see a little bit of time, each of them tonight. Tavares Jackson, a little bit better thrower, maybe. I don't know. That pass that Matt Jones threw to... To Smith was a pretty good one. Both of them are good runners. Jackson. Passing. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Trying to go the out route right there. And pretty good coverage by Boise State's Julius Brown. Julius Brown there covering Smith, who we just talked about. Smith making that great grab in the first quarter. This Bronco defense needs to come up with a turnover of its own, and they're having trouble getting people in and out of the game right now. We'll see what happens here. Broncos looks like, I thought I saw two guys go out, so we'll see what happens. Well, they have a dime package in. Yep. Broncos looking third down here. Jackson stepping up into the pocket, has the time, throws over the middle, incomplete. Nobody was there. Great coverage by Wes Nurse. And even underneath the coverage, Quentin Michael has some good coverage. Travis Berger coming in from that outside linebacker position. He's really the sixth defensive back that was out there on the field. They list him as a linebacker, but he played free safety last year. Came in and gave Jackson a good hit. Kind of forced him early to throw that ball. So Richie Butler will come on to kick. Uh, he's been doing this. This is his fourth season as the punter, and he's been averaging about 42 yards a kick all through his career. And you can see what a great kick. Flag is down, by the way. That's Tim Gilligan with the ball. And Gilligan out to the 45-yard line, but there was a flag down. And that flag came early. Yeah, it did. I'm not sure what it would be. Could be holding on the return team for Boise State.
Here's the call. Some kind of ineligible person yeah. downfield. Called against Boise State. Steve Shaw, a referee tonight in the white hat. So they'll talk it over, see what we do. Or don't do. Major discussion going on on this one. Talking it over with Carol right there. See what Batman wants to do. <laughs> we got to find out how he got that nickname. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it listed in the in the uh, program and in their yearly media guide. So it's something that's been with him for quite a while. Maybe he just likes Batman. Who knows? Whatever it is, he's saying, help me here, help me. But I bet he likes the yeah. new Batman. Right, take door number one, door number two, or door the number three. Infraction on the receiving team, the penalty is declined. It'll be first and ten. Okay. I guess they would have had to kick it again. Well, that'll give the Broncos the ball at the 44-yard line. Decent field position. So basically, it's like nothing ever happened. We never saw that penalty. 13.56 to go here in the second quarter. Time for the Bronco offense to get something going here. This why you got to go to college sometimes. You got to get a degree to figure out exactly what happened on that play. All right, the Broncos will line up now. Brock Forsey. The lone setback in there. Brock's the man. A little second effort gets him uh, about four yards on that carry. Nothing really at the line of scrimmage when he got there, but he kept the legs driving and finally found a hole. He just does such a great job. I mean, when he came out of high school and whatnot, I remember the first humanitarian bowl he played in and what a great job he did. He just really has stepped up his game. He told me that coming to Boise State is the best thing that's ever happened to him. Six carries tonight, 26 yards. And he's your lone setback. Tim Gilligan in motion. Gilligan has it. The end around. Looking for a block. Gilligan. Well, I tell you, Gilligan jumping over people. That's the way to get hurt. He gets it to midfield. This defense of Arkansas, I'm impressed with the speed that they have. They really get to the ball quickly. Elliot Harris, I believe, is in on the part of this tackle. And Bua finishes it off. Elliot Harris, 6'4", 265. And Gilligan's jumping over guys, getting hit by a guy that weighs a ton and a half. Third down and four. Right at midfield for Boise State. Trent Lundin in motion, the tight end. Dinwiddie caught from behind, sack, fumble. Let's see if they call it a fumble. They will. It's Arkansas's ball. What they were trying to do that time, I believe, it was a design play where Dinwiddie was going to step back and then go up the middle and keep it and the quarterback keeper, and there was no hole there. Well, See if takes, that's not the truth. He takes a five-step drop, and I think you're right, but he was cut off at the pass, and then he fumbles. Broncos just self-destructing. I think the turf caused his fumble. We'll have to look at it again, but that's not the way they ruled it. Let's see. Nope. No, it was out. It was out before it was. Good call. So, another turnover for Boise State. And Matt Jones is back in the quarterback. Keith Turner is the man who got the fumble. High formation. They hand it off to the fullback. I think Jones kept it. Oh, there you go. He did. Nice. Nice fake. It was a great fake. Excellent job by the running back to stick it up in there and sell that play. And everybody that, tackled him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because Jones was running off, uh, peeled off to his right, ran off tackle, and picked up about six yards. Well, Matt Jones, he, like I said, he didn't start any games last year, but he played in 13, and he averaged 76 yards rushing a game. So that gives you an idea that when he's in there, he likes to call number nine oh. and he likes to run. And he's big, 6'5", 225. He just ambles along. Straight drop back. Here comes the blitz. He stays up with it. Now he's down. Now we've got holding. So all kinds of flags going down, and so does Jones go down at the 50-yard line, but it took about five Broncos to get him there. And if it's holding, they'll probably decline this 
make it third and 14. Well, there's many people coming in. You got to believe it was holding. And it was. A lot of time initially. There's the hole probably right there. And Avalos can't quite get him down after two tries, but Dane Oldham comes in and mops up for him. Yeah, pretty good job there, huh? So Bronco's There's, everywhere. Look at that. The good reaction, though, by Avalos to get back in on that play. And they did, they did indeed decline it. Okay, we were waiting for him to turn that mic on, but that didn't happen. So Broncos declined a penalty to be a third and long for Arkansas. Look at Dinwiddie being worked yeah, on he, now. He limped off after that uh, sack where he fumbled the ball, and they're retaping his ankle, I believe. Yeah, you I can think see. it's his ankle. Yeah, well, that's a grimace right there. You know it's not good when you start grimacing when they're working on you. So we will see what happens. Broncos first got to get the ball back. Jones being chased. Throwing. Overthrows everybody. You know what? That was almost a completed pass. There were about five Broncos right there on the coverage. Ball was intended that time for Birmingham. The flanker to Corey Birmingham. Flag down. And here's where Dinwiddie gets his little problem. Look at his ankle kind of roll over right there. He rolled over the top of that ankle. So they'll put a little reinforcement tape on it. And offsides on Boise State. So that'll bring up third and nine and negate a pretty good coverage sack there. Well, the Broncos lined up in the neutral zone, which really frustrates you as a coach. It's one thing to jump offside. It's another thing to line up offside. Now that call doesn't get made very often. Not very often. Third down and nine. Another third down try here for the Razorbacks. From the shotgun, three receivers wide to the left. Jones. Again, throwing underneath the coverage. Got good pressure that time from the Broncos. That was Bobby Hammer pressuring him, and he had to get, a, get rid of it. You talk about a play that takes a long time to develop. They faked the screen to the left. Then they came back, and were going to try a screen to the right. Cobbs was out there in the flat. His blockers were out in front of him, but Jones just didn't make a very good throw. So now Boise State will try to receive a punt here from Butler. You got to believe Butler will try to pooch this one because he's got plenty of leg to put it into the stands. Forget the end zone. Boise State calls time out. So the Broncos call timeout. As you can see, we've got 11-17 to go here in the first half from Fayetteville. It's been all Arkansas on the scoreboard, although the Broncos have got a lot of yards. All right, you know, it's time to gear up, get the completely new Bronco logo apparel at the Boise State Bronco Shop. Your choice of new Bronco logos on name brand gear. And see the new value price Bronco wear line. You can shop at the store in the Student Union on campus in Boise, or you can save some time and travel by ordering online at www.broncoshop.com. Gear up with the Broncos today. Now the Broncos need to gear up here in Fayetteville. They are down 14-0 with 11-19 to go in the first half. They have forced Arkansas into a punt. Butler will be kicking it away. Tim Gilligan is back at the 10-yard line, but I don't think Gilligan is planning on a return here. Well, it's very apparent they're capable of playing with this Arkansas team. That is not the point. But when you turn the ball over three times and you get sacked six times, that is not going to get it done. Butler. Just dropped the ball. He went to punt it and dropped it. Well, Brock, I'm not sure what happened. Going to be blocked. <laughs> As the Broncos came off that right corner, Julius Roberts just jumps on the ball. There's an inexperienced guy around the football. Julius picked that bad boy up and run exactly. with it a little bit. Give it, give it the try. Look at this, though. Watch Butler. Watch the pressure off the right-hand corner here. You see, one of the Broncos just got to him before he could kick it. That's that Ryan real. Nelson. That's Ryan Nelson that got Yeah, there. it was Ryan Nelson coming off the end. A defensive end blocking a punt. That's off the corner. Unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Here comes Ryan Dinwiddie back. Still limping a little bit. So the Broncos make something happen. Now let's see if they can cash in. He's limping bad. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, he is limping really bad. And he was looking for Lou Finucchi down the right side who had double coverage. Uh, he's he's going to have to come out of the game. He can't play on that. I mean, he's a tough kid. 
He can't even set up. Nope. And he is just squashed there by Pierre Brown. You do not want to be a sitting target with these guys coming at you. If you're not mobile, you're in trouble. Yeah, you would think you might have to go to the shotgun, but look at him. And he's going to go to the shotgun. Oh, no, he's not. Big loss there. Another sack. Swilly in motion. Dinwiddie throwing to Brock Forsey, and Forsey in traffic. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe about a yard gain. It's going to be third and long. Fisher went over after that play and talked to Dinwiddie. He said, are you okay? Can you play this game? Well, I think uh, D.J. Rohde better find his helmet. Look how slow this drop is. This is real time. This is not in slow motion, but that ankle is just killing it. So Ryan Dinwiddie playing on one leg right now. His team looking at third down and 13. From the shotgun. Balls up, had it in the air, intercepted. Intercepted by Keith Turner, the defensive end. Ball batted up in the air, stayed up there for a long time. And the big defensive end, Turner, comes up with it and then rumbles for a few yards afterwards. Dinwiddie is just absolutely hobbling off the field. He, I don't think he's coming back. Right? Absolutely no mobility. I mean, he can't plant properly. He can't get the ball in the position that he wants. That ankle is just not good. So the Broncos down 14-0 here in Fayetteville and down a quarterback, possibly. And again, another turnover. The ball at the 42-yard line. So Arkansas right back in business. And Cobbs gets to the line of scrimmage and stops. So good job by Boise State right there. Travis Berger at the bottom of the pile along with a couple of other Broncos. Avalos in there. Wes Nurse also came in, got a piece of the action. There's Wes right there as you take a look at our Sinclair update board. So it'll be second down and 10. No gain. 9.06 to go. 9.05 and counting here in the first half. 14-0 Razorbacks, and they're looking for more right here. Broncos have been sacked six times. Had a pump block return for a touchdown. Had a fumble recovery. Now a pass intercepted. Cedric Cobbs knocked out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Cobbs on a sweep play that time, getting to the outside. Travis Berger had a chance to get him at the line of scrimmage. Couldn't quite get a hold of him. Andy Avalos. Starting inside linebackers for the Broncos, along with Chauncey Ako. Haven't heard his name called much tonight. He hasn't been in to the fray too many times. From the shotgun, Jones. Three receivers in the pattern. Jones hands it off to Cedric Cobbs. Up the middle, lots of room. He could be gone. Cedric Cobbs touchdown from the 38-yard line. 38-yard touchdown run. And the Arkansas Razorbacks are blowing it open. And the uh, folks in red here certainly like the result of that play. Cobbs takes the delayed handoff up the middle, and the Broncos got caught in a blitz, I believe. But the middle of that line of scrimmage was absolutely wide open. And you see why Cedric Cobbs is the starting tailback here at Arkansas. He is fast. Extra point attempt is good. So it's 21 nothing, just like that. Turnovers, sacks, black punts all killed in Boise State here in Fayetteville. 21 nothing. Arkansas leads it. Well, there you see the story. Ryan Dinwiddie on the bench. Let's go down to Jeff Caves for the story, Jeff. Well, when Ryan did when he came off, he yelled for B.J. Rohde. He sat down. He said, okay, let's try to tape it. He tried to go. Obviously, you saw it didn't work. They're characterizing it as a bad ankle sprain. Gary Craner told me he's probably done for the day. Wayne? All right, so B.J. Rohde, the backup quarterback, 
We'll see what he can do. He's only played really one game, and that was Central Michigan last year. Well, when you see Ryan Dinwiddie, I mean, he is a tough, tough competitor, tough kid. And when you see him hobbling around like that, that ankle is in bad shape. Going to take a bounce. David Michael takes it right at the goal line. And Michael out to the 23-yard line. All right, Arkansas up 21-0 here. Interception started, right there. Started off with a deflected pass. Turner, the defensive end, with the snag. And then Cedric Cobbs just turns on the Jets. Beats everybody to the goal line. So there he is, B.J. Rohde. He's been around for a long time. He knows this offense, but he hasn't had a lot of experience. We'll see what he does. And what a tough spot for him to come in. And pitch it out to Brock Forsey. You know what? And at this point, you see Tony Bowie just pinning his ears back, saying, hey, they got a new QB in there. They're probably going to go with just a run. Let's go after the, the running back. Well, B.J. Rohde, not a small guy either. It's 6'5", 230-pounder. Has looked pretty good in the fall camp. Had a good spring, too. He's been throwing the ball pretty well. Obviously, he's not a Ryan Dinwiddie, and that is definitely not a good picture there. Pretty much tells the story here in Fayetteville right now, as does the scoreboard. B.J. Rohde looking, throwing to Swilly, and just misses him. I tell you what, that's not a bad pass. Good coverage. That time by Jimmy Beasley, and Swilly was there as well. Swilly running a little post-corner route. Didn't have much separation between him and the defender, but Rohde laid it out there so that only Swilly was going to be able to catch that, and B.J. Rohde getting a little taste of what Dinwiddie just has experienced over the last quarter and a half, and that's guys in red jerseys knocking you down. So it's a third and ten. That was Elliot Harris, number 98 again. In on Rody. From the shotgun, B.J. Rody now in a quarterback. Here comes the blitz. Rody over the middle, complete, but felling down was uh, Fanuki. Lou Fanuki caught it. The ball was really low. Had he caught it standing up, he would have had the first down. Yeah, the pass was a little low, and Lou had to go down and slide to catch that ball. B.J. Rody with his hands on his helmet after he threw that ball knows that the first down was there. All he had to do was get the ball a little higher. And Lou would have probably gotten the first down. You bet. Hit him at the waist instead of the knees. And Lou Fanuki has the first down instead. Broncos are forced to punt. And that has not been a great thing for them. And this is Warner. Jesse Warner going to be kicking the way. And you know Arkansas is going to come. One hopper. Warner a low kick, but that could roll. Richardson picks it up at the 39-yard line, and a couple of Broncos right there to put him down. Donnie Heck and Cameron Merritt down there on that coverage. And that could have been a disaster, but it worked out okay for the Broncos. Yeah, you get a one-hop, low punt, scoops it up, but hey. 21-0, 6.45 to go here in this first half. We are back here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Boise State trailing 21-0 with 6.45 to go here in the first half. And Matt Jones in at quarterback. And again, the storyline, Ryan Dinwiddie sacked, sacked, intercepted, and hurt. And he is done for the night. E.J. Rohde is in at quarterback. But right now, it's Arkansas with the football. There's Talley. First yeah. time we've seen him tonight. We didn't think we might see Fred Talley, but... So you see him, apparently he's got a little bit of a shoulder problem. You know, when you're up 21 to nothing, that shoulder must feel a lot better. Yeah, no question. Here comes Tally, another very talented running back for this Razorback attack. Avalos gets a piece of him, but Nurse has to finish it. He's a backup, but he's on the Doak Walker watch list, so that tells you how good he is. Yeah, how good are both of them. Second down and three. And Jackson's in at quarterback this time. Now Jackson. They're just switching guys around. Talley. Well, they had Matt Jones flanked out at the flanker position. He was in the slot that time. 
But when you get a quarterback who's six foot five, can run like Jones can, very athletic, he could probably do a lot of things with him. Just trying to keep the Broncos confused. Sally will check out and Cobbs will check back in. That's, you know, yeah, Houston. Which uh, poison do you like? Exactly. You know, Houston with so much talent could do what he wants. Right up the middle. That looks like a first down, right at midfield. And this time they go with the fullback. Razorbacks got to the line of scrimmage in a hurry, and the Broncos weren't quite set. Weren't able to establish any position in there in the line of scrimmage, and they got bounced back four yards, enough for the first down. Now you see Arkansas with 121 yards in total offense, a lot of that in the 38-yard run by Cobbs. From the I formation, Jones handing it off to Talon. He gets a couple. Avalos again at the bottom of that mile. Wes Nurse coming up from his DB spot. Bobby Hammer and Dane Olam doing a good job of creating a pile there, so there's really nowhere to run. We haven't seen the option for a while. Might be about time for that one. Well, I tell you what, Brock is really slow on defense, getting set up. They're looking for a defensive signal. Meanwhile, Arkansas is ready to run a play. Brock is set to go now, second down and eight. That's Brandon Holmes in motion. Holmes is the guy who gets it, has the first down, and go all the way down to the 30-yard line. Dave Franklin missed the tackle, and a big play. Got to be some kind of busted coverage there because Brandon Holmes just ran out into the flat all by himself. Nobody near him. Franklin came up to get him, so I don't know if he was initially Franklin's guy or not, but there was nobody near him. Dan Hawkins got himself some work to do. He just would like to get to halftime being down 21 nothing. but right now Razorbacks working on another score. Cedric Cobbs back in a rail, but running back. Stretching it out, stretching it out. Gets it all the way down to the 21-yard line. That's what Cobbs does so well. That's a nine-yard game. Well, he's so big and strong, he's not going to fall down when you just bump into it. Now, you got to put some serious leather on this guy to bring him down and watch him get behind his blocker there and just enough of a push and guys getting caught in the watch there they can't make the tackle it's not really poor tackling it's just good job by Arkansas creating a diversion and then the Broncos get all bunched up West Nurse and loses the containment a little bit right up the middle new running back in there Darius Howard we told you we would see him as well and so everybody getting to play for Houston Ryan Nelson, the man who made the stop. Loa Emsley, number 47, in the game for the Broncos at the defensive tackle position. He and Altieri are at the tackles. Julius Roberts. Ryan Nelson at the defensive end spots. Howard and Birmingham are the wide receivers right now. Broncos looking to blitz. They're bringing it. Jones runs around it. Blake, intended for Jason Peters, the tight end. He was all alone, hit him between the 8 and the O, but he couldn't bring it in. And there is one huge human being, folks. Jason Peters, 6'5", 315 pounds. And he's the tight end. He's Yikes. The right side of the offensive yeah, line is what he is. A, that's a big hog. Yeah. Travis Berger flying through the air, and that ball hits him right between the 8 and the 0. West Nurse says, thank goodness I didn't have to hang on. Yeah, now what was, what was I going to do with him if he caught it? Yeah, if I had to catch him, bring him down, I'm in big trouble because I'm only as big as one leg. Jones, throwing, incomplete. Intended out there this time for uh, George Wilson. Julius Brown got over there, but a little late. Yeah, if that pass is a little bit higher, it has a possibility of a reception. I so, think you, you saw just a little bit of the weakness of, of Matt Jones' throwing ability right there. So it's a third down and ten now from the shotgun. Watch for the draw right up the middle with Cedric Cobbs right there. Worked before, didn't it? Yep, sure did. Three receivers in, but now you can see Matt Jones calling something off, so maybe we won't see that draw. Jones runs it, and he runs out of real estate. He's at the 15-yard line. That'll be a a field goal attempt coming up from the right hash mark. And that was, again, Loa Emsley, number 47, in on the tackle. 
from Kailua, Hawaii. He's made, quite a, he's made quite a trip to get to Boise State. He was in school at Hawaii. He was in school at Fresno City College, I believe. Then came to the box. Field goal attempt coming up here from O'Donohue. And O'Donohue is true. And just like that, and we've been here before, deja vu. Two years ago, Boise stayed down 24 nothing before they began a comeback. But this has been more workmanlike on the part of the Arkansas Razorbacks. They have sacked quarterbacks. They have recovered fumbles, intercepted passes, and blocked punts. They have dominated, although the total yardage doesn't indicate that's the, fa that's the fact. And, of course, they've also gotten Ryan Dinwiddie out of the ballgame, which they didn't do to Bart Hendricks. So Absolutely not. That's a big situation. Hey, next week, September 14th at 2 o'clock, join us again here on the Bronco Television Network. We'll be in Laramie, Wyoming, as the Broncos take on the Wyoming Cowboys. This is the first time the Broncos and Cowboys have met on the football field, and you can see it all right here next Saturday, September 14th at 2 o'clock, live across the Bronco Television Network, Boise State and Wyoming. So this... Bronco television crew just kind of goes from Fayetteville to Laramie, wherever. Yeah, we're going to be in Texas. Where else are we going? We're going to Oklahoma. We're going to go to California, going to Nevada. We're all over the place. It's Mike Sanford now. He turns out, he puts the headsets on. So we started the game with Dinwiddie in the game and B.J. Rohde on headsets. Now we got Rohde in the game and Sanford on the headsets. 11 plays, 48 yards, and four minutes off the clock. And the Razorbacks are on the board. Now the Razorbacks will be kicking into what is a very, very mild win. I think that with the leg that we've seen out of Carlton, this isn't going to be a huge problem, but Broncos could use a good return. He's been hit right in the middle of the ball and kind of scribbling it. This is just a pooch kick coming up high. Broncos call for a fair catch. That was a good hard. job. Very, very well executed by Cameron Merritt. Yeah, Cameron Merritt. Fair catch by Boise State. That's one way to stop the return. No doubt about that. Cameron Merritt, very good decision. And they work on that play. You know, they, they know that sometime during the season they're probably going to see that. So good job by Cam to get that right hand up in the air. Well, you know, you don't often say that a kicker is versatile, but we've seen a pretty versatile David Carlton tonight. He has, you know, squibbed him, pooched him, kicked him deep out of the end zone. I mean, he's done it all. He really has. Let's do what B.J. Rohde can do. The Broncos need some points, obviously. I know that's an understatement, but they, they've got to get something going here. Incomplete intended for Gilligan. That's a tough pass for a guy like B.J. Rohde to come in and throw out there in a flat like that. B.J. has a tendency sometimes to throw the ball a little bit low. I think that has something to do with his height. He's trying to compensate a little bit for that by keeping the ball down. Well, not only that, but you see the nose of the ball is always down on his throws a little bit. A lot of times it would start down and come back up. He's a straight drop down. There's a nice pass. And the catch knocked out of bounds. They're going to say incomplete now. Knocked out of bounds at the last second by Tim Gilligan. Gilligan said, I had it, but it came out when I hit. But the officials said, no, I was watching all the way, son. <laughs> Again, the short roll to the right. Rody this time rifles this one out there. That's a good-looking pass. Let's see if he actually catches this ball or not. I think he had it. Looked like he got that ball, ain't it? But I'm not over there on the sidelines with the strike too. So it doesn't really matter what I think. Third down. Here comes the pressure. Gilligan. That's a catch. Yeah. Look at that. Perfect throw by B.J. Rody. And a perfect catch by Tim Gilligan. Right in stride. I mean, he didn't have to break any stride at all. Again, rolling away from the pressure. B.J. Rohde lays that ball out there. It's not a beautiful spiral, but it's a perfect pass right on stride. Big first down for Boise State. Broncos here with 2.17 to go in the first half. That's got to be a big confidence booster for B.J. Rohde, too. Remember, Broncos trailed 24-6 at halftime two years ago. Razorbacks offsides that time. They did, yeah, and they did get the flag. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. I thought they didn't throw the flag. So the Broncos will have a first and five. So B.J. Rohde being put into the wars here. You know, I talked with B.J. after a round of golf a 
couple of weeks ago and said, hey, you know, bud, you got to be ready to go because you never know when your number is going to be called. And he said, hey, I am ready to roll. I know this offense like the back of my hand. On the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. You know, speaking about that golf game, how'd that go? Uh, what golf game? Did I say we played golf? <laughs> I was confused. It was, well, yeah. What I played was that didn't resemble golf. BJ, on the other hand, played very well. So BJ had a few less strokes than you. Uh, yes. Okay. yes. That's, do we need to go any farther no, than we'll, this? we'll leave it at that because you're, you. you're bigger than me. All right, BJ Rohde. Once Look again. Out. He beats it, but throws incomplete. Trent Lundeen had it in his hands, and I don't know what happened. Look, it took a little while for it to hit the turf. Jeb Huckabee. On the coverage, number 15, that ball actually hit him, too. So the Broncos with a second down now. Second and five for BSU. Wingfield, wide to the right, trips to the near side. B.J. Rohde from the shotgun. Well played to Brock Corsi, and Brock has really been corralled this year. I mean, this game. He has just really not been able to get anything going. Take a look at our Taco Bell two-minute clock as we count down the final seconds of this second quarter. Forzi getting banged around because his blockers are getting knocked off the ball a little bit. So that's maybe why you haven't seen the production out of Brock that you normally see. This is a very, very physical defense for Arkansas. And it's been very aggressive. They just came in this game saying, we are going to take it to Boise State. Something they did not do the last time. They're doing it tonight. Kevin Lousman in motion. B.J. Rohde on the option. And just no room to go for Brock Corsi. I mean, there's nothing but red jerseys there to corral them and bring them in. The Broncos are fast, and there's Huckabee again on that tackle. They're fast, but they're not as fast as Arkansas. There's no doubt about that. And they're not going to be as fast as too many teams in the SEC. This play just defensed incredibly well all the way down the line. Huckabee gets, gets the tackle along with Beasley, but very good job by the interior guys to string that out. Great recognition by Beasley. He just came up from that cornerback spot, cut everything off, and then Huckabee made the play. And so the Broncos going for it on fourth down. They are two of two on fourth down conversions this year, both against Idaho last week. Going for Lundin. And Lundin got turned around. Couldn't quite get it. Rocky Atkinson was down there too, so both those tight ends in the general vicinity of each other. But the pass thrown back behind both of them. So it'll be... First down for Arkansas with 39 seconds to go here in the half. B.J. Rohde, though, looking pretty mobile out there, I would say. You know, B.J. right now probably just feeling his way, trying to figure out what to do, what kind of pressure he's getting. Well, that was a pretty well-executed play. I mean, they had the receiver, two receivers out in that general vicinity, but completion just not quite there. Okay, if Andy Ambrose doesn't catch him by the thigh pad, he's gone. Wes Nurse might have had a shot at him, but it wasn't looking good. Now the Razorbacks are going to call timeout, try to preserve what's left of the 31 seconds. See B.J. Rohde on the sideline. You know, he, he wishes he had a couple of passes back because he could have had a first down, and then he underthrew another receiver. But I'll tell you what, you know, he hasn't looked bad out there coming in in this kind of a situation. We'll have to see maybe if Jeff Caves at halftime can find out about Dinwiddie. They took him out. Yes. on the side where they're probably looking at an x-ray. In fact, let's go down and talk to Jeff right now. Well, Larry, you hit it on the head. Uh, it's probably not something they wanted to do, but Gary Craner was working with Ryan Dinwiddie, and then all of a sudden they called over Dr. George Wade to take a better look, and he's got pain in the high side on the right side of his ankle. It's not down low. It's up higher in an area where you unfortunately can find fractures. So what they're doing is trying to, by process of elimination, hope that's not what it is. So that's where Ryan Dinwiddie is, and that's why BJ Rohde is where he is. We'll talk to Hawk about being in a you know, familiar circumstance as he was in 2000 and the adjustments he'll have to make, and we'll take it from there. Wayne? All right, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. So it's not been the kind of first half the Boise State had anticipated coming down here. Now Jackson is in there at quarterback again, so switching around. I think he's the only quarterback in there. I don't see Matt Jones in the lineup. Tavares Jackson letting it fly. Julius Brown was the only one that could have caught that. 
Julius, I think, a little upset with himself because he didn't see it until he just turned around and he couldn't make the adjustment to come get it. No, you're absolutely right. He, he spun around like a top down there, but he still managed to keep good coverage on Smith. Let's watch the end of this play. Julius Brown is running a long way, and this ball's in the air a long time. I don't know if we'll see the end of the play, but he just got turned to the side there. Excellent coverage by Julius Brown. Yeah, and he just couldn't make an adjustment. He felt that had he seen it just a fraction of a second earlier that he could have got there and made the interception. Third down and five. Cedric Cobbs. Look at that nice little stutter move that he has. And it doesn't work this time. And he's knocked out of bounds with 14 seconds to go on a fourth down coming up. But he's so strong, he gets hit between the hash mark and the numbers and still manages to drag himself out of bounds and stop the clock. Well, you can see how much of a veteran that he is. He doesn't panic. He just kind of takes that stutter step, moves around, doesn't panic, takes the time, lets the play develop, strings it out as far as he can. I know this sounds strange, but this is a situation you could possibly see a fake punt. Arkansas feeling very good about their defense. Butler. Block. Flacco's have it. And that is Andy Avalos. He keeps his feet trying to lateral it. I believe he didn't fumble. I think he tried to lateral it over to the left-hand side. They're going to get progress all the way down to the 29, so there's only four seconds left on the game clock. Let's see if they decide to try and kick a field goal right here or if they throw one into the end zone. Low snap. Again, the Broncos with excellent pass rush. I believe that's Wingfield. Yep, Billy Wingfield with the block. How about that? And then Avalos manages to keep his balance and tries to flip it out to Quentin Michael. Look at that perfect technique of getting the hands on the ball. Watch these. Well, you can't see it there, but he tried to flip it over to Quentin Michael. Broncos are going to try a 45-yard field goal, but before they do, Arkansas takes a timeout. Really surprised Arkansas punted that ball. I mean, the way that offense has been going, it was only fourth and three. I thought they might just try to grind it out, burn a few seconds off the clock, and then let their defense finish out the, quarter, the half. Well, there you are looking at Tyler Jones right there. All right, coming up at halftime, it's going to be our Dodge Halftime Report. We'll have the scores and highlights for you coming up at halftime. Don't forget, Boise State. Where are we? This broadcast is copyrighted by Boise State. All rights reserved. Why can't I remember that? I don't oh, well. know. One of these days we'll, I will. We'll have to go deep into therapy about that one. I'm not sure I know. why you there's, can't remember. There's something in my mental psyche that blocks that out every time I see that copyright out there. All I have to remember, folks, is this broadcast is copyrighted by Boise State. All rights reserved. Who's that being helped out over there? Can you tell? I think that's probably Dinwiddie going off on a cart down at yeah. the corner of the end zone heading into the Broncos' side of the locker room. That's not the way he wants to go I off. I don't think so. All right, here we go. Tyler Jones on to try a 45-yard field goal attempt. Broncos down 24-0. Tyler Jones' kick is up, and it is no good. Wide left. So that'll end the half. It kind of ends the half. A missed field goal by inches. Ryan Dinwiddie being wheeled off. And a 24-0 score. I think it pretty much sums up the whole picture right there. Yeah, this is not to, not exactly how the Broncos envisioned this trip to Fayetteville. And definitely not with this guy with his leg all iced up being wheeled off the field. That is not a good sign. We are at halftime. 24-0. Arkansas leads it. And let's go down to Jeff Caves. Hawk, this isn't exactly how you wanted to see it go, but you've been here before. Uh, how can you make the outcome difference? Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. You know, we're just giving it to them right now. Defense played well at times. They got us a couple big plays. You know, we just got to come out and play steady football. We got to do it with uh, B.J. right now because it looks like R.D.'s hurt. So, What is the change in the offense with B.J. back there, or is there any? No, none. He knows the offense. He's capable of running. We got to go with it. What about in the first quarter, uh, that punt that they blocked to get it going with Ryan back there? What was, what were you trying to get done? Trying to go offensive punt. That's totally on me. That's a bad call by me. All right, thanks, Hawk. Wayne? All right, there you go. Dan Hawkins, bad call on him. And as you can see, he's pretty focused right now. Let's get back in there, talk to this team, see if they can back in this game down by 24 at the break. We'll be back as well after this on the Bronco Television Network. Down by 24 at the break. We'll be back as well.
And uh, Boise State trailing 24 0 over Arkansas. Wayne to zoom back along with uh, Larry Pulowski. And of course, uh, Coach Dan Hawkins, when he came off the, the, the field at halftime with uh, Jeff Case, pretty much said it all turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Yeah, I think his uh, assessment of the first half was very appropriate. And he's very disturbed at the way that this first half has gone. And uh, But what a stand up guy. I mean, he took the, the heat for the call on that block punt in the first series. And uh, not many coaches are going to do that. So Hawk will get in there at halftime, get him going, try to get him fired up, and get B.J. Rohde going. Arkansas defense has really just decided to come out after Boise State this year. Yeah, obviously the blitz is a big part of their package this year because they've done it so many times. I counted at least six, maybe seven sacks in that first half. Uh, what about B.J. Rohde? Here's a guy that's been around the program. He knows the offense, but... He hasn't been out there directing it a whole lot. Can he get the job done? I think now that B.J. rohde has got a couple series under his belt. He's been out on the field. He's gotten the jitters out of there. He's completed a pass. I think he'll be fine. He knows this offense as well as Ryan did. You know, it's 24 nothing. but what's your take on the Bronco defense, how you thought they played tonight? Well, I think the Bronco defense is just a little bit outmanned. But the second thing is they've been on the field a lot because of those turnovers, right. and you just can't put the defense in that position time after time. So they've stood up fairly well. Uh, Cedric Cobbs has kind of worked them over in a couple series, but there's a lot of talent on that Arkansas offense, and they can't be asked to do what they're doing with these turnovers. All right, good enough. Scores and highlights coming up here as the Dodge Halftime Report continues here from Fayetteville's 24-0 at halftime. Arkansas leading Boise State. Back in Fayetteville, 24 nothing. the Razorbacks lead Boise State. And of course, the story of the game has got to be the situation with Ryan Dinwiddie, the Bronco quarterback. He is hurt. He is out. It is B.J. Rohde's game in the second half. But let's go back and see how he got hurt right here. Well, somewhere in this melee, his right ankle gets severely twisted. And they've even taken him in and had an x-ray, Wayne. So he went off with ice, and then they took him off in the cart later on. Not a good sight for R.D. Well, oh, Ryan Dinwiddie done for the night. We'll have to find out whether or not he's done for a game or two or whatever. So Ryan Dinwiddie is out. B.J. Rohde is the quarterback of record in the second half. Boise State trailing 24-0. They will have to kick off to Arkansas to start the third quarter, so it doesn't get any better. And taking a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Dodge wow. again. Look at the rushing yards. That's ugly. Just one for the Bronx, 99 for Arkansas. Passing yards in favor of BSU. First downs are in favor of BSU, 8-7. But again, even though time of possession is, it's the turnovers, turnovers, turnovers that have killed the Boise State Broncos tonight. Halftime score again, 24-0 in favor of Arkansas here in Fayetteville. We'll be back with the start of the third quarter. After this. 24-0 Arkansas leads it here as we get ready to start the third quarter. B.J. Rohde. Still got that big smile on his face. I mean, hey, that guy's always the optimist. Tyler Jones going to kick it off, and it's the first kickoff of the night for Tyler Jones. Low squibber, and it's going to go out of bounds, and Arkansas will start at the 35-yard line. Take a look at some highlights, which are really lowlights for Boise State. Boy, the uh, block right there. Mosley picks it up, takes it in for the TD. There's the rumbling, stumbling Matt Jones, but yeah. he finds that big old fullback. He rumbles into the corner of the end zone. And then, of course, this is the kind of day Dinwiddie's had. That yeah, didn't start off good, and it has not ended very well for him either, but he's had a few bright spots. That's one of them where Wingfield battles for the ball. This guy right here. Look at him go. You cannot let him get going. Cedric Cobbs. So here we go. Back to live action right now. And from the 35, here come the Arkansas Razorbacks. Fred Talley gets the first carry of the second half. Andy Avalos up in there, Quentin Michael. You got so many weapons of your Houston nut. That's a big decision to make. Which one are you going to use? Yeah, you just keep going back and forth. You can plug him in, no problem. What Houston wants to do is put one more score on the board here. And then he thinks he's pretty much got the Broncos where he wants them. He has them right there now, I think. Look at this. Jones keeping... All the way, gets to midfield and into Bronco territory at the 49-yard line. Big six-foot-five-inch quarterback. Faked the handoff to the left, pulled it out, and had a rather large area to run to the right side of the formation. That's what he did in the first half. First down for Arkansas in Bronco territory at the 49-yard line. Tally. Maybe two. Goes airborne for a second. 
Dane Oldham got under there and got his legs out from under him. Okay, Jeff Caves, you're on the sideline. You got an update on Ryan Dinwiddie. What's the latest? Well, it's an update you're going to be reporting for the next six weeks, Wayne. At best, he will be back in six weeks. He's broken his ankle. He'll be casted and flown home. Six weeks would be approximately the Fresno State game. That's if they're lucky. If it's normal, Gary Craner, Craner, the trainer, said he could be out the rest of the season. So they've got to get confidence in B.J. Rohde and get used to Ryan Dinwiddie having a broken ankle and walking around in a cast. Gary? Uh, all right, Matt Jones fakes. Let's see if they're going to call anything. Broncos. You know, you had a little guy, Wes Nurse, against a big guy. Well, the, the line judge on this side of the field gave the uh, hand over the top of the head thing, so that ball was so far over the top of the receiver, they weren't going to call the push in the back by Nurse if there was. Well, Poitras is 6'5", 260, and, of course, West Nurse, a little smaller than that. Well, there was a little contact, but the pass could not have been caught, so the official's judgment was very sound. Third down now. Rockers would love to get the football back. Oh, they may get it back in great position. Jones trying to pick it up. Here come the Broncos. Jones lose one guy. And look at this guy go. This is unbelievable. Jones gets it down close to the first down, but there's a flag down. Three Broncos miss Matt Jones. He gets all the way back to the 42-yard line. There is a flag, and I believe it's going to be against Arkansas. But we'll wait and see. There's a clip on the run back. Or not the run back. It, well, it looked like a run back. It looked like a run back. I guess the run back of the errant snap. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that, uh, you know, this guy's a 6'5 basketball player. He, he can get up in the air, and he still couldn't get to that one. But what a run after the catch, and then there was a clip. We don't see it in our picture, but they call it, and they'll roll this thing back. Nice open field tackle there by Wes Nurse. Clipping on the offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. So it'll be third down again. And a lot. Yeah, it'll be a lot, but the way things are going, who knows with these guys. And again, in case you just missed it, if you're still coming back from halftime and still gathering your thoughts, Ryan Dinwiddie, a broken ankle, they will cast it tonight, fly him home, and uh, he is done for six weeks at least, possibly the season, depending on how the thing Reacts. Well, I told you the kid's tough. I mean, he came out there and played on a broken ankle for a series. That's amazing. That's unbelievable. All right, Matt Jones. From that shotgun. Here comes a little bit of pressure. He just seems to get out of there in a heartbeat. Very close to a first down. Completion to Richard Smith. But I think he's going to be short. But it'll be fourth down and makeable. We're going to mark it between the 42 and 43, so we'll bring on the punting team. And an excellent throw that time by Jones. A deep, deep square out, but he just squared out two yards, three yards in front of where the first down mark was. And that could have been one of those ad-lib square outs, you know, Larry, where basically he saw his man in trouble kind of roll into his right, so he came back over that way. So here comes Butler. He'll be trying to kick it away. His last two have been blocked. Broncos this time. Don't get to it. Look at him. Hang it up. Hang it up. Hang it up. And the Broncos are going to start at the four-yard line. Getting down there was Richard Smith to make the stop. We will take a timeout. Boise State will have the football, the good news, the bad news, at their own four-yard line. 24-0, Arkansas third quarter. Well, coming up towards the end of the game, stay tuned for the Subway Sub of the Game. We'll highlight a non-starting player who has made a big contribution to tonight's game. Brought to you by Subway. Subway, eat fresh. Our Subway Sub of the Game. And let's hope B.J. Rohde has a great, great second half. And he can be our Subway Sub of the Game. Well, he's certainly our most important sub, whether he's the sub of the game. Or that that is still to be determined. But right now, he is the most important sub of the game. This Arkansas crowd getting behind their defense with the Broncos at the four-yard line, and B.J. Rohde back to pass to Panuki out to the 11-yard uh, line. So a quick little gain right there. Seven-yard pickup. Second down and three. B.J. Rohde's been thrown to these guys in practice for a long time. They're, they're comfortable with each other. Obviously not in a game situation, but they practice together every day, and he throws to some of the first-team receivers just as much as he throws to the second-team receivers. Haven't 
seen David Michael in the backfield a lot tonight. You know, he's, he only carried the ball a couple of times in the first half. Here's Brock Forsey. That's a first down out to the 12, 15, 17-yard line, rather. And you know what? I think that's the first time I've really seen Brock be able to really just push that defense back. Well, and he had some help there. Uh, Huff and uh, Colburn doing a good job on that right side of the offensive line. Watch him get behind the big guys. See Huff really working his man down the field. Just blew him off the ball. So Broncos, as they say, get out from the shadows of the goalposts, and now they're out to the 17-yard line with a first and 10. Brody again, complete this time to Billy Wingfield, and Wingfield gets it out to the 25-yard line. Just kind of isolating one-on-one -on -one out there, aren't they? Well, this drive so far has been a very controlled passing and running drive. Not a lot of five, seven-step drops for Rody. Just quick hitters, get the ball to where it needs to be, and so far it's going well. You know, Ahmad, and I will say Batman Carroll was the man who made that stop, and I say that because we found out since the way he's named Batman, that's his given name. Yeah, Derek, our stage manager, yeah. got that information for us. So I appreciate that. So he's born, and Mom looked at him and said, it's Ahmad, Batman so it, it was not him that liked Batman. It was Mom. Yeah. Yeah, he tried to string it out, and all of a sudden, the string bounced back right at him. Yeah, one thing we haven't seen tonight is a lot of cutback by Brock. Just because it's been so difficult for him to even get to the line of scrimmage, let alone cutback. And this defense is very disciplined, and they pursue very well. They really do. They've got guys, like you say, perfectly positioned, and then boom. Next thing you know, you got four crimson jerseys on you. Here's the low angle of it. You're seeing what Brock saw, and that wasn't very pleasant to see. So it's third down now. Top three, a little less than four. But a big third down. The Broncos want to hang on to this football. Billy Wingfield not going to do it. There's a flag down, though. Let's wait and see. Billy Wingfield was drugged down there by Caleb Miller. We've called his number a couple of times. And also on the play was Jamar Gallon. It's offside. That's a first down for the Broncos. See what happened here. Broncos need a break. Offside on the wow. defense. Five yard penalty. There you go. The There's the first, the first break down. Broncos have gotten. Yeah, Houston Nutt just took his headset off and just kind of walking back to the sidelines. Just disgusted with that call. Well, yeah. Hawkins looking a little concerned still. Uh, Houston just doesn't want the Broncos to get any kind of momentum at all. I mean, even though Dinwiddie's not in there, he knows that, well, right now I can see that this B.J. Rohde kid can get him someplace. Play clock down to nine seconds, and B.J. hurries it up a little bit. Now he calls a timeout because he doesn't like what he sees. Uh, we must have had a play call with motion in it because he knew he didn't have enough time to get it done. There's a heady play. There's a guy who's been around a program for five years. Calling timeout, so the Broncos will have the ball first and ten. We'll be back. There's 8.58 to go here in the third quarter. Hey, broken down, man? Apparently. Hey, you're that Kramer dude, the natural gas guy. Uh, yes. You saved me a bundle, man. How so? Your commercials. They convinced me to convert my crib to natural <laughs> gas. Oh, really? Yeah, gas heat, water heater, appliances, the works, man. That's great. Hey, man, can we lift? Why not? Back in Fayetteville, 24-0 Arkansas leads it. That was the score at halftime. Hey, folks, you know what? It's time to gear up. Get the completely new Bronco logo apparel at the Boise State Bronco Shop. Your choice of new Bronco logos on name brand gear and see the new value priced Bronco wear line. You can shop at the store in the Student Union on campus in Boise or save some time and travel by ordering online at www.broncoshop.com. Gear up with the Broncos today. Who is that model? That's Dan Hawkins. All right, first down and 10 for Boise State. He's not feeling like a model right now. Not right now. E.J. Rohde steps up, beats the blitz, gets the ball to Billy Wingfield, gain of nine yards. That was very pretty. So B.J. Rohde's been around for a while. Although you haven't seen much out of this guy, you know, we saw him at Central Michigan last year, did an effective job. Watch this heady play. Just steps right up, calm, cool, collected, gets the ball out to Wingfield. 
Billy Wingfield having a good fall. Rockers want to get the goose egg off the board. Make something happen here. That's Jay Swilly in motion. Fumble. And Arkansas is going to pick it up, and they're going to run around with it. And that is Ken, Ken Hamlin. Hamlin. Yeah. And just like that, the Broncos have something going and just cannot hang on to the football. And that really wasn't an Arkansas problem. It was a Bronco problem. Well, most of the turnovers tonight really have been, Wayne. I mean, you can pretty much attribute most of them right back to the lack of execution. That time, Rody turned the wrong way to hand this ball off. Forsey coming on the backside was not ready for the handoff because he wasn't supposed to get it there. And then Hamlin just scoops it up, and he's trying to get to that sideline. So just like that, Broncos look like they're starting to work a little bit and get something to go, and boom, it stops. And now Arkansas right back in position to score at the 31-yard line. That's Tally, who's still in the ball game. Matt Jones keeping the ball to the outside. Fake to the fullback, and he's knocked out of bounds. He gets it down to the 19-yard line. That'll be a gain of 11 and a first down for Arkansas. Wes Nurse made the stop. The option play, you see the fake handoff to the fullback up the middle. Akko doesn't get off the block. The outside contained man misses, and then it's, he's off to the races. Good fake inside. But Julius Roberts getting turned around out on the outside. Didn't know where the quarterback was. Let the contain go. First and ten. Tally, the tailback, used about eight yards deep right up the middle. He's down to the ten-yard line. A nine-yard pickup. And at some point, you just got to feel like, you know, the Broncos momentum-wise are just starting to hang their heads a little bit. Everything's gone wrong for them tonight. Tally gets that ball to the line of scrimmage in a hurry, but he's got a gaping hole to run through. Paul Allen gets cut there, and Avalos out overruns the hole. Just a lot of breakdowns lead to a large gainer. Second down, and just a little bit more than one. And Tally again, cutting against the grain, has the first down. He is to the six-yard line. Broncos just trying to catch him. Nothing fancy about that play at all. Julius Roberts, talk about a guy that's outmanned size-wise at 235, 240 pounds up against a 330-pound right tackle. Nothing fair about that. Nope, starting to take its toll now. First and goal. Jones into the end zone. A little bit too much. Julius Brown was on the coverage. And the ball was intended there for George Wilson. Hey, Julius has done a pretty solid job of coverage tonight. They've tried to go into the end zone a couple of times on him where he's been there. What Julius does, I think that's pretty good, is he picks up the guys coming into his area pretty well. It's very quick, changes directions really well. Has learned really how to get on that inside hip and make the move with the receiver. Now they got single coverage on the corners. They hand it off to Tally. Broncos knew that was coming, and they stopped Tally at the line of scrimmage. Excellent reaction to the ball that time by the Broncos. They got off their blocks, and they made Tally bounce that thing way to the outside. He had to retreat just a little bit. Watch Tally as he's coming off tackle. That's designed to go inside. Berger bounces it out, and then Akko and Nurse, Quentin Michael are all out there. You know, I think that was Cameron Merritt who kind of dove in there and just kind of busted up the hole, if you will, and forced Talley to go outside. Third and goal now. Ball still at the seven-yard line. And Matt Jones looks right, looks left. Bingo. That's to Corey Birmingham all alone. To Corey Birmingham coming across the formation and lost, got lost in the shuffle. But he didn't get lost in the corner of the end zone because Matt Jones found him. This play is looking right, looking right, looking right. Now he sees the guy crossing the formation. He says, hey, that guy's wide open. Why don't I throw him the ball? Just great execution by the Arkansas Razorbacks. 
and the kick is good. So it's now 31 nothing. There you see, looking right, looking right, going left. Touchdown, 31 nothing here in the third quarter. All Razorbacks. Right now, Razorback Stadium is indeed hog heaven. Hogs lead at 31 nothing. Let's go down to Jeff Caves. Wayne, uh, you and I and Larry have been reading all week about Houston Nutt and his time in Boise and how people may or may not feel about him. And Hawk was talking about how he disciplined players, and now we can start reading into it. How many points will be enough? Well, from my perspective, Houston Nutt's offensive production has went down each year he's been the head coach at Arkansas. In 98, it peaked. Last season, he finished 97th in the country in offense. So if they choose to continue to score points, I think it has more to do with that than anything else. Wayne? All right, thank you, Jeff. David Michael takes it at the one-yard line. And they just close him off real well. Possible fumble again. And it is. And Arkansas gets it. What else could go wrong for Boise State tonight? Six plays, 30 yards, 204. And now Arkansas is right back on the attack. Here's Tally. There's more Tally. Tally is in. And they're about to Tally right yeah, here. This is a Tally. But it's with Birmingham. So. All right. And then, of course, the fumble by David Michael. And Arkansas has the football again. They run it. And nothing there. And Avalos coming up with a good solid hit there. Kept it to a very short gain, maybe a yard. Tavares Jackson now in there at quarterback. Of course, he's been in and out, but I think you probably see him the rest of the night. I don't think you're going to see Matt Jones again. He started here. And he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish, and now they've got a couple of different runners. We saw Diarius Howard a little while ago, but he was in there. Now it looks like they've changed again, so... They're running a lot of different people. Jackson in the air, turns his receiver around and incomplete. And that again was intended that time for Wilson. Lock tier clay on the coverage at the right cornerback position. In there for Gabe Franklin. Those three guys, Franklin, Mock tier clay, and, and Julius Brown, kind of all three rotate in and out. Julius is pretty much anchoring down the left cornerback spot now. Boise State, five fumbles tonight, lost four of them. Hard to uh, be in a ball game with those stats. From the I formation, Jackson, as Arkansas continues to look for more points, and Jackson gets it out of bounds to the 16-yard line. That's going to be short of a first down. It'll bring up a fourth down play. And we'll see O'Donoghue come in. An attempt, uh, what we got here, 33-yarder? Yep. 33-yard field goal attempt by Brandon O'Donoghue, a junior, two-year letterman. Try to make it 34-0. And he puts it right smack dab through those uprights. So it is. 34-0. And the Razorbacks here just having their way with Boise State, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that Broncos cannot hang on to the football. Yeah, I'm not sure I've uh, seen a Bronco team in a long time that has left the ball on the turf so many different times. And so many weird situations. I mean, they deflected past the line of scrimmage, intercepted. Dinwiddie tackled from behind when he when he hurt the ankle, got the ball stripped out there. Well, the missed handoff between, you know, Rody and Forsey. And Michael, David Michael's fumbled twice. Yeah. It's very, the wheels have just come off. That's about all you can say. So a combination of a pretty good Arkansas team really coming on the attack here and a combination of Boise State, like you say, just kind of falling apart a little bit in certain areas of they knew they had to come in here and execute well. And that they have not. Broncos still have the goose egg up on the board. 
You know, the execution has been uh, not too swift, uh, and, and really they had a pretty good week of practice. They thought they had their, their act together, but this is a very physical, a very fast, and a very impressive Arkansas team. I mean, we Boise State has given them a lot, but they've made the most of it when they've been given it. And, and you know, the six sacks on Dinwiddie certainly took their toll. No question about that. Yeah, one of them was absolutely uh, devastating. Yep. So here we go, another kickoff. David Carlton. David Carlton with the Bishop Kelly High School in Oklahoma. And this one's not going to be returnable. A oh, low line drive out of here. At least you can't fumble that one. <laughs> now, come on. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to look for something positive here. <laughs> Lisa Broncos will have it at the 20-yard line, no question. Who's that down there shagging balls? What's he doing down there? Broncos down there, or the yeah. uh, uh, Razorback uh, mascot down oh, there finding the football. I mean, he's shagging balls. That's a multi-purpose mascot. Yeah. Even he gets a, a hand down there, doesn't he? You don't be so happy, because, buddy, because that's, that's a relative, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is called a pig skin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rody, going deep. Pretty good coverage. Matter of fact, great coverage there, intended for Billy Wingfield. Now they're drawn just a little bit. That's all right. Ball hit Wingfield. It was on target, just ran out of sideline. And it was excellent coverage on Wingfield downfield. Wingfield's a little winded. He's going to come out. B.J. Rohde, you see his numbers for the night? Brock. Only mistake he's really made so far is just the uh, missed handoff to Brock Forrest. So second down and ten from the shotgun again. Here comes the blitz. Rohde has it tipped at the line of scrimmage. Getting that ball was Clark Moore. That's just a freshman, a redshirt freshman. I think it's Keith Turner, 97. Keith Turner got it. Puts the, no, he's the guy that puts the hit on Rody in the oh, back. Okay, there you go. That's there. why it was thrown when it was because Rody could feel this pressure coming. Okay, and then Moore tips it right there. Yeah. Rody just lucky to get out of there with his body intact. Yeah, they brought the pressure. While this is obviously a passing down with. You would think. Yellow get in motion. The screen over to Brock Forsey. I'll tell you what. Tony Bullard that time comes up with a big play. He fought off his block. He gets in there and makes the play. And he was the only guy that could have done anything about that play. Now this guy's for real. This is a very, very good outside linebacker. Look, there's uh, all Broncos over there. Slipped right between the two offensive linemen and made the play. That is big time. This guy's not that big. He's only 5'11", 218. Strong safety. Got to knock some people down. Four Broncos out there, one Razorback, and the Razorback made the play. And Broncos going to be kicking away. Jesse Warner, standing at his two, has to hurry the kick. Not bad. Gets a great bounce. All the way down to the 33-yard line. So not a bad kick at all. Oh, nice nice kick. Spiraled out of there. It was uh, very, very well executed. You know, there's going to be a lot of uh, lot of focus on Warner now. Certainly a lot of focus on B.J. Rohde now. Time to see if guys want to step up and play or not. Looks like these two are at least giving it a good college try. Then we take a look at our Lexus Bronco trivia question. What player has the career record for the most 100-yard receiving games? When I tried to guess last time and I got it right, you got mad at me. Well, so no, I'm you not can guess, guess now if you'd like. Feel free if you want to take a guess after this play. All right. Well, look at this guy go. Just like that, get in the ball game and go for it. Darius Howard, we told you about him. He's the third tailback. What kind of talent do you have in there? Howard is uh, even the fourth tailback, maybe? I don't know. He, the, 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 
There are so many guys <laughs> ripping off so many yards. It, it, you're going to need a very large hard drive on your computer to keep up with yeah, these I got I got them listed as the third guy here tonight on the, on the depth chart. So first down run by Howard. Yeah, we got new quarterback. Ryan Sorahan. So Sorahan back, and he throws it to nobody. You know, I don't really have a guess on that trivia question. I, I really don't have a guess on that one. Well, what Bronco player has the career record for the most 100-yard receiving games? Let's take a look at our Lexus trivia answer. Uh, you know why, there it why is. would I not know that? Ryan Akibi just didn't come to my head. Yeah, you probably called a few of those games. Wayne. Yes, no question about that. 13 100-yard receiving games for Ryan Akibi from 93 through 96. The uh, Pokey Allen years. And the ball was in the air a lot then. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, we talked about Howard being like the third tailback in the depth chart also there, but that was his first carry ever as an Arkansas Razorback. So he hasn't seen a lot of action when he did. Boom. And the illegal procedure penalty, I believe, on the Razorbacks. So it'll be first and 15 as you take a look at the Sinclair Oil ticker. Some scores from today. Big game today was down in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Uh, Fresno State gave Oregon all they could handle, but uh, Oregon won it 28-24 over Fresno State. Sorahan, play action fake. Look out, he's done. Bronco stayed with it. That, that was a great covered sack by Boise State. All the DBs had the receivers covered and, and then allowed the Broncos to get in there. Ryan Nelson with that sack. He had a lot of time to throw the ball. Sure did. But the protection finally broke down. Nelson came from the right defensive end to make the sack. It's going to be second down in a mile and a half. You got a second down in 25. Now Sorahan changing something at the line of scrimmage. Complete to Birmingham, but he has stopped right as he catches the ball. So pretty good coverage there by Gabe Franklin. Yeah, Franklin did a good job of making the hit and then holding on. Franklin's not the strongest guy in the world, but he did a good job there just hanging on until they could finally, either he drug him down or got some help. The Corey Birmingham, that's a sophomore right there. A lot of young guys are going to see some playing time here yeah. from now on. Yeah, now he's to the end he's of the game. been in a lot of the night, but uh, you're right. Right now, he's probably going to get steady playing time. Yeah, I think you've seen the last of Cedric Cobbs and Fred Talley, especially with that little bit of a banged-up shoulder that Talley had. Quentin Michael looked like he's blitzing off the left side here. They're down in 20. Pass is complete. Going to be well short of the first down. Now it fumbles, but they're going to say the play was dead. But look at that. I would have liked to have seen Ryan Nelson rumble and stumble for something, but it didn't. Pass was complete to Sparky Hamilton. Chris Carr made it stop. And there's the finish of that play. Andy Avalos over there ripped the ball out. Tim Gilligan now is going to hopefully get a chance to return his punt. Broncos with the block. Almost get it again. But Butler gets it off and very high. Gilligan comes up and takes it at the 22-yard line and still on his feet to the 30. Boy, he really rushed over there to make that catch, didn't he? Yeah, he had to run a long way. I mean, that ball was all the way over on the outside hash marks right at the, at the side stripe. And Gilligan did a great job of seeing the ball and a little sportsmanship there by the Razorbacks and Gilligan. So a chance here for B.J. Rohde to prepare for the rest of the season. At least for the next six weeks. Lou Finucchi coming out of the backfield, goes in motion. Underneath to Jerry Smith, and Jerry's got a first down, it looks like. Right at the 41-yard line. Well, from what I've seen so far in the second half out of the Broncos' offense, the quick plays are the ones that seem to work the best for them right now. If they can take the three-step drop or the one-step drop, get the ball to somebody and let them play. Think of it as we kind of saw that early, and we didn't see that early. You and I were kind of talking about you're trying to set up for the long play, and, and, and obviously Arkansas is coming with the blitz. You need something quick. Right now, B.J. Rohde doing a pretty good job, I think, of running this offense. 
Brody again. Pass That's out to Gilligan. That was a one-hopper. Yep. That's a hard pass to throw. And maybe the toughest one that Rody has to throw. That ball has to travel a long way for 10-yard gain. He's probably throwing that ball 30 yards to get 10. So it'll be second down and 10. Ball brought back to the line of scrimmage, the 41-yard line. We've got 11 seconds to go here in the third quarter. From the eye formation, David Michael, the eye back, the handoff is the fullback. And that playing fullback is Brock Forsey. How about that? He's got the first down. And he is down at the, about the 42-yard line. Yeah, Forsey and uh, Michael were in that time. And a little switcheroo there. They put Michael at the tailback and Forsey at the fullback. Doesn't really mean a whole lot because they both do the same thing. They thought there was a fumble there. The ball did come loose and everybody's diving for it. The official said it was down at the 42. So that'll be a first down. Brock Forsey gets up limping now. Brock just may be absolutely pooped, tired, whatever. That's going to be the last play here of the third quarter. So the Broncos have the football. They've got it in Arkansas territory, but they trail here. 34-0 as we head to the final 15 minutes of this ball game in Fayetteville, Arkansas. How bad do turnovers hurt you? Let me tell you this. After three quarters total offense, Arkansas has only 58 more yards than Boise State with 34 more points. Turnovers kill. B.J. Rohde with the time. Throws underneath the coverage. It is complete. And that is Brock Forsey. No, it's not. That's I'm Rocky sorry. Atkinson. Rocky Atkinson, Atkinson with the tight end. 86, not 36. And there you see what I'm talking about. 194 to 252 in total offense. Passing yards, Boise State. Of course, rushing yards belong to Arkansas. But that'll tell you, you know, only 58 yards difference in this ballgame. And now with that play right there, probably about 45 yards difference in, in total. And boom. I'd like to thank all yeah. of our Treasure Valley Dodge dealers for that uh, little stat refresher. Rody underneath. Tim Gilligan. Gilligan is down to the 18-yard line. I think that's the first time tonight Boise State's been inside the 20. I can't remember them being inside the 20. Gilligan's a guy that's seen a lot more time at the receiver position. Runs a great crossing route. Long ways ahead of Jimmy Beasley. Good job of making the break. Lost his defender. Separated. And he does an excellent job as usual. Now here comes the crowd. The crowd wants to shut out back. Got Jay Swilly coming to the near side. Rocky Atkinson at tight end. Kevin Lausman, so double tight ends for Boise State. Pitch out to Brock Forsey looking for Swilly, and he overthrows him. Had him wide open, overthrew him. That worked against Idaho a year ago, and tonight it's just not going to happen. Forsey with the toss, and he's got a glove on that right hand, so... You know, sometimes can be a little difficult to have the feel on the ball, and you can see the thing float on him. Absolutely nobody was there. I'd do it again. Okay. Do you think they'd be expecting it again? Not right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Second down in 10. What do you have to lose? You're down 34. Exactly. Seven. Good, good point. Here comes the blitz. Look out. Over the middle. Complete. That's going to be a touchdown, Boise State, and that is Lou Fanuki. Sweet Lou Fanuki did a good job of reading the blitz, too. Rody definitely read the blitz, and he gets the ball on the crossing route to Fanuki. Perfect, caught him just in stride, so he didn't have to slow down at all, or he would have been caught from behind. Lou Fanuki finally gets the goose egg off the board for the Broncos. I really like what I see from B.J. Rody. He has really played well. And here's a nice drive by Boise State. Tyler Jones kick is up. It's good. So the Broncos are on the scoreboard with 13.58 to go in the ball game. B.J. Rohde leads them down the field. Some pretty pinpoint passing from that guy. Broncos trail at 34 to 7, but they're now working for next week. All right, Boise State will be kicking off for the second time tonight. They kicked off to start the second half and. 
Now Tyler Jones is out there again, and here's the pass to Lou Finucchi to get the goose egg off the board. Gavin Walls came off that left end for the Razorbacks and put another pretty good hit on Rody, but BJ's a big, strong guy. He can take a few blows. Birmingham and Richardson back there, deep to receive. And Birmingham takes it and goes out of bounds and will be at the 20-yard line. He's been out of Jeff Cave. Jeff, what do you have for us? Well, you know, in Arkansas, they love their football, if nothing else. And uh, you're looking at a shot of the ball boys, the guy with a red shirt, and he has a towel. It's about a 43-year-old water treatment salesman. I met him before the game. Ball boys here at Arkansas are uh, very difficult jobs to get, but they pay pretty decent. Here's a 43-year-old guy, just wants to get down on the field. He gets paid 250 bucks a year to carry the balls and make sure they're dry for Houston Nut and Company. Not a bad gig. Wayne? All right, good Cave, enough. Caves, there's a fallback position if the radio business goes to heck. You never know. Economy can turn. Station sells. Glad the job. Hand off. Broncos clog up the middle pretty good. Clogged up the hole, nothing there. And again, we're seeing Howard carrying the ball. Howard, six foot, 220 pounds. Houston Nuts certainly got some uh, talent to work with. Well, there's no doubt about oh, that. Oh, you bet. It really does. Again, Ryan Sorahan, the quarterback, a junior. Third string quarterback in there right now. Big deep drop rolling to his left. Trying to find Smith incomplete. Good coverage by Gabe Franklin. Good job by Ryan Nelson chasing the quarterback down so at least he didn't have a clear view of the passing lane. Not the game anybody expected here, not even Arkansas fans. They really expected a pretty close game here tonight, but again, you look at the turnover picture and all the problems that Boise State had, and then really, quite frankly, the loss of Ryan Dinwiddie. Again, if you just tuned in or hadn't heard, Ryan Dinwiddie with a broken ankle, and he's going to be out for at least six weeks, possibly the entire season, depending on how it ends or how it responds to treatment. Sorahan looking for that screen it's a fumble or at least it looked like a fumble but it was re it was a fumble recovered by Arkansas Crowder tried to pitch that ball didn't he not sure what he tried to do but it was recovered by the big lineman right there I think he, he made the catch and then watch at the end of this play he pitches the ball he's trying to pitch it anyway I think yeah no he just he just lost it yeah it came and it came right into Davenport Smith so offensive guard right spot right time so Butler is on to kick it away Why would you want to pitch it to a 6 2 three, Yeah, three, I know. Four. I was going to say, here, right, maybe, he's, maybe he's got 4 eight Could speed. Be. Who knows? It wouldn't surprise me as athletic as these guys are. That's like Jason Peters. He's a tight end, okay? We talked about him being 6'5", 315 pounds. He's got 4 eight speed. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Butler, just a steady eddy at punter. Tim Gilligan. Never really could get started before Crowder gets him. Gilligan is waiting for his blockers to clear a path for him, and Crowder snuck in the back door and got him. So time out on the field, 12-12 to go here in the ballgame. 34-7, Broncos will have the ball when we return. 34-7 is our score with 12-12 to go in the ballgame. Hey, don't forget next week, September 14th at 2 o'clock, the Bronco Television Network will be in Laramie, Wyoming. Boise State takes on the Wyoming Cowboys. Wyoming, by the way, lost to Central Michigan today, 32-20. It's the first time the Broncos and Cowboys will have met on the football field, and you'll be able to see it live right here across the Bronco Television Network next Saturday, the 14th of September at 2 o'clock. Boise State, Wyoming. Broncos coming out of that shotgun. Quick throw out there. Is that Brock Corsi that caught it? Yes, it was. And that's a play that last week probably would have gone for 20, 30 yards. But because of the speed and reaction time of this Razorback defense, it only picks up three or four yards. You can see Brock Forsey. He has been hit a couple times. He's walking gingerly. I mean, it's going to take a couple of days for him to heal. For those of you watching in the Boise area, don't forget to join me and Coach Dan Hawkins tomorrow at 5.30, live from Bronco Stadium and Coach's Show. We'll talk about this game, see what the coach's take is on it, just kind of get a, a basic uh, report on the team and how they fared with this thing. 
B.J. Rohde, the screen. And as David Michael gets caught from behind as he tries to cut his way around, and there's a flag down, a late flag went down at the 41-yard line. As Michael gets the first down, it's going to be holding. So I think it'll be a first down, but then they'll walk off the penalty. That flag came down. Well, I see there's another flag down at midfield. So we have two flags down. And that's where they're going to mark it off from. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. So it'll be a repeat of second down. I didn't see that other flag there at midfield. There was one back at the 40-yard line, so... I saw Scott Huff look to the heavens, shaking his head, so I'm <laughs> yeah. assuming it might have been on him. That was the telltale sign right there, isn't it? But still, the Broncos uh, starting to execute a little better. Sure, they've got a second team in here, but there's some first-teamers in here, I think, still. Got Hamlin in there for sure. He's a first-teamer. Bull is still in there. I guarantee yeah. you he's a first-teamer. Yep. Manuki draws a crowd. Richardson said, so yeah, they're all in there. So at least as far as the defensive backs go and some of the linebackers, all the first teamers are still in there. And this Boise State Bronco team is moving it a little bit better. Third down and 10, though. Third and 10 situation. We'll see what uh, B.J. Rohde can pull out here. He's got Wingfield coming in. Jay Swilly will check out. So David Michael, the lone setback. Again, I mentioned that Brock Forsey, not hurt, but it looks like he's he's taken a, a beating tonight. No question about that. Looks like the blitz is coming. Here it comes. B.J. Rohde throwing it out. In comes it. He just got rid of that ball. Hamlin went for the interception, but he slipped on the turf. Yeah, the ball was tipped as Rohde was just going to heave it out of bounds, but it got tipped. And it was an opportunity for an interception for Arkansas, but to no avail. So Broncos will punt it away. So Jesse Warner will come out to kick it again. The Broncos kicking woes. Keith Shuttler and Achilles tendon just won't heal. Keeps trying to get it better. And then Sean Steichen, who is the backup punter, he dislocated a big toe. That's a tough injury if you're a kicker. And so here comes Jesse. Warner trying to make something happen, and he kicks it out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Jesse Lee has got that forward roll thing going. Yeah, he's got that going for him, so he's got some real good hops. So 34-7 to is our score here. Some of the crowd now starting to file back to their cars and get ready for the ride home. We'll be back after this. Mack and Fayetteville, 34 to 7, Arkansas. And our subway sub of the game tonight has to be only one person. That's got to be B.J. Rohde. I mean, put into a tough situation. B.J. came in, done really well. You take a look at his numbers, 13 to 22 for 118 yards and a touchdown. That's not bad at all. Coming off the bench cold and having to fill in in a very tough situation. B.J. Rohde is your subway sub of the game. Subway, eat fresh. Now how about this? Matt Jones back in the ballgame. And he's taken out of bounds. Chris Carr with a stop. Andy Avalos had a little chase with him before that. Jones has been pretty productive tonight. Certainly hasn't made any mistakes. Well, it's not going to help the Houston nut situation, is it? Everybody talking about Houston and rolling up points and some of his decisions that he makes, putting the starting quarterback in up 34 to 7 with 9.54 to go. Right up the middle. Nice run that time by Brandon Holmes. Brandon Holmes has been in there much of the night as well. He's a fullback. Noah Emsley in there uh, just threw a right cross at somebody. A left hook, and I'm not sure what was going on there, but there was no flag. So first down, ball just outside the 40-yard line as the Razorbacks come out of the I formation. Jones keeping it, looking to option. And he gets about seven yards. He's across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Houston, that's been changing that quarterback 
in and out quite a bit through this out this game anyway. So maybe he just feels like Jones needs a little bit more timing work before they take on South Florida next week, and then they start their SEC campaign against Alabama. Second down and three. Holmes stops. Ryan Nelson at the bottom of that pile's got Holmes around the legs. Good job by Ryan Nelson, so no gain. It'll be third and three. Clock running with 8.39 to go here in the ball game. Tough night for Boise State fans and for the Boise State Broncos. Broncos coming with the blitz. Jones throwing over the middle. Got his man. There's a flag down and hanging on for dear life. I think that was, who was that? That was Julius Brown just hanging on for dear life. But there is a flag down in the backfield. That's where you get a lot of holding. Yeah, they're going to bring it back. Wilson was the guy who caught it. And then Julius Brown was just hanging on to his jersey. Jones had all day to throw the ball. You'd think there might be some holding in there somewhere. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. So it'll be third down all over again. Ball now back at the 37 yard line, 38 yard line, let's make it. It'll be third down and about 12. From the shotgun, Matt Jones, his team up 34 to seven. Here comes the blitz, and he runs up the middle. This guy's got a lot of running room, and he breaks the tackle out of bounds. Shy of the first down, but only two yards shy. Crowd upset that he got hit near the out near the out of bounds marker, but you know what? I'm. What are you supposed to do? Let him get the first down? Yeah, I'm a little not. bit. You, you know, hit him. you got the. They should be upset that he's in the ball game. This is a great run. He steps up right around the blitzing Julius Brown, and then he high steps that one and. Avalos takes him out. There's no big hit there. And they bring in Cedric Cobbs. They bring in Darius Howard. And they're going to go for it. And again, they get set before the Broncos do, but this time I'm not sure they made it. They didn't. So they did not get it. They tried to hurry up and snap that ball before the Bronco D was set, but it didn't work. <laughs> So the Broncos will take over on downs. Tony Avalos, the last one to get up off the pile there, along with Tony Altieri. Andy Avalos has had a pretty good second half. He's been running around, making some plays. He's a little tuckered right now. He could use, a, use some bench time. Here's the play. They came up to the line really quick, snapped it. You see penetration there. Chanciaco got upfield and stopped that play before it could get going. Nice play action fake. Rody to Fanuki. He's got it. Touchdown. DJ Rody to Fanuki again. Boom. How about that? Boy, Rody starting to feel those Cheerios, isn't he? Yeah, you saw the way he uh, reared back and through that. 6 5, a lot of leverage on the ball. That was beautiful. Hit him right in stride again. What? See it. Good time to take a look again. Watch the arm strength here. And this pass is right on the money. Yeah, it really is. Doesn't have to break stride. And how many times have we said that with Rody passes tonight? They have not had to break stride. He's been right on the money. Tyler Jones is good. And the Broncos have cut it to a 20-point game. 34 to 14. 7.26 to go. Here it is again. B.J. Rohde with the time, and look at that perfect throw. Well, he steps right into it. Beautiful form. Ball turns over, drops right into Fanuki's arms. Maybe Lou uh, kind of likes this D.J. Rohde guy at quarterback since he's now throwing two touchdown passes. That's two more than he's had in the other game. Now, that's what the Broncos thought that they could do, Larry. I mean, they really thought they'd come in here and get their offense going, but when you come in, and you just have turnover after turnover after turnover, and then 
they just couldn't really get any passes over. And quite frankly, they've been kind of blitzing B.J. too. I think B.J.'s handled the, the blitz maybe even better than Ryan did at first. Well, I think there's a, a little less impetus in those blitz now than there was at the start of the game. I mean, those guys had, you mentioned the term, had their ears pinned back, and they did. And they were coming with a little more force, but still the Bronco O-line picking those blitzes up a little bit now, and Rody stepping up into the pocket maybe a little bit better because there's a little bit more of a pocket left. And that was a one-play drive, 49 yards. Say, well, there's, there's a drive of the game right there. <laughs> Yeah, all in one play. Yeah, I know. You don't have to mess with it. Exactly. You don't have to edit anything. It's a one play drive. <laughs> it's right there. You show the replay, put the logo up, we're ready to roll. <laughs> Arkansas takes timeout. I'm not sure what's going on here. We're getting ready for Boise State to kick off, and Arkansas called timeout. Now, Boise State's got some things to work on, but you know, one of the things they have been working on, I think, right now is, is really next week. Get B.J. Rohde some, some, uh, you know, some work, some reps. See what they can do because again, uh, Ryan Dinwiddie, the broken ankle, he's out for at least six weeks. Speaking of the drive of the game, it's time for our Jiffy Lube drive of the game coming up here. Jiffy Lube is the well oiled machine, and this was a pretty well oiled machine right here, starting with Gilligan. Nice little crossing route. All of this drive featuring BJ Rohde, who gets it to Fanuki. For the touchdown, and that is your Jiffy Lube drive of drive drive of the game. Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine. You bet. And you know what I was talking about right there on that pass to Fanuki for the touchdown. You saw the pressure that came in, and BJ was just able to get it off pretty quick. And you know he's made some pretty good decisions here. Broncos looking for the onside kick here, and that's why Arkansas called timeout. Broncos going to work on the onside kick here. Oh, what a great catch. What a grab. That was a sweet <laughs> hand. Who was that? I mean, that was like a one-handed grab. Was that Hamlin or? Oh, that, that was, was 33. Pierce. Yeah, Pierce. That was the fullback yeah. who caught the pass for the touchdown earlier in the game. Boy, he snagged that thing out of the air. That That's was like, a line drive knuckleball. You got to believe you checked that glove. He probably came over with some super glue on it. Yeah, we better check those gloves for sticking. This is kind of an odd onside kick that it actually goes up in the air. Oh, Maybe they were experience. trying to yeah. bounce it off of somebody. Yeah, I think what he was trying to do is get maybe the one more bounce, and I think he kicked it just a little bit too well. So, Arkansas will have it at the 48-yard line. And how about this? You got Cobbs in a running back, I believe. Am I wrong? I can't see that number right there. Yes, it is Cobbs. Well, Houston's getting a little nervous. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't think so. Okay. There's 7.05 to go in a ball game. Well, that one goes for not. That's one of the few times the Cobbs has carried the ball tonight where he hasn't gained positive yardage. Second down and 10. Birmingham going wide to the right. And Matt Jones, the starting quarterback. Still in here, 34 to 14 ball game. Still passing. Running out of territory and throws it away. So the Broncos doing a pretty good job. Yeah, great coverage down the field. A couple of new faces there. Lee Marks, number 17 in the ball game. Well, and a very odd stat. That, that's probably, if we had a sponsor of the odd stat of the night, that would, would probably work. be it right there. 294 total yards for Boise State, 286 for Arkansas, and it's 34 to 14. And, and again, factor in five, seven, what, seven turnovers? Seven turnovers tonight. You go back to that, and that's what kills you. Boise State did not execute early in this ball game, and Arkansas, as you can see, at Brock State in the ball game, could have been a different story. Calls his own number again, and he's down to the 35-yard line. That's going to be a first down. Just kind of puts it in the big belly of that fullback and then just takes it out and keeps it. Well, and the Broncos just horribly over-pursued that play. And he, Jones put a fake on Ryan Nelson. He almost had Ryan twisted in knots. Looked like a pretzel right there. Unbelievable. So the big man, Jones, again, with those running ability, he's not the smoothest looking guy, but he sure is effective. There's Howard. 
Gets it down to the 30-yard line. Gain of about six. And the clock continues to run here with 5.55 to go in the ball game. Eleven carries for 70 yards for Matt Jones. Very effective. Just has a, a unique ability to sidestep tacklers and to, you know, again, it's not the real slashing, flashing moves, but boy, he sure uh, has. It's a, these guys are having a heck of a time getting a hold of him and tackling. Howard. Rocco smelled that one out. Santiago. Yeah, that's the first time we've actually called Akko's name, and he's done a good job on that play. Lola Emsley up there, too. So it'll be third down. Akko, the senior. Out of Ronan Park, California. Third down and about five. A go from the shotgun, Cedric Cobbs, Matt Jones. We're in the backfield. Flips it out to Cobbs. And Cobbs going to lose some yardage. Well, maybe not. Well, he's not uh, going to get the first down. Uh, well, he actually gonna... stepped out of bounds. And that's why I couldn't believe he got that yardage, because he spun around, didn't have a lot, a place to work, and he stepped out of bounds, so he will lose yardage. Let's we'll see what kind of field goal kicker we have here. Well, looks like they're not going to go for the field goal, or are they? Now they're bringing the field goal kicker. So Donahoe will come in to try to kick a field goal. Should be about 50 yards if they set where they normally would. Maybe Maybe 51. Put it, yeah, 51. I can put it right. Well, now they're, he's counting. He's counting. There, there it is. is. <laughs> I knew where it was supposed to be. He just had the wrong mark. I'm getting a college education. I can count these stripes. <laughs> so it is exactly a 50-yard field goal attempt by Donahoe. Oop, little fake. fake. Bradley gets the ball over there to Brandon Holmes. Holmes. Holmes finds a little bit of a crack. Watches, they touch the ball down, then he flips the ball to Holmes. Great block on the outside. Missed tackle there. Avalos can't get him. Quentin gets enough of him to get him out of bounds. And Ryan Nelson is limping off the field right now. So they got the ball at the 23-yard line. First down and 10. There's a flag down. And Howard's down as well. Check out the laundry and see what it is. Got a motion penalty against. I think it was Arkansas. illegal shift, shift on the offense. The penalty is declined. Second down. Jason Peters, I believe, was in motion and somebody else moved or shifted positions at the same time. And Peters might have gone in motion forward before he should have, but at 6 3 3 15, it's hard to stop yourself. Right up the middle they go. Inside the 20, down about the 19 yard line. That's the fullback this time taking the carry on him, Martin Pierce. For not being in the game too much, he's been pretty impactful catching a touchdown pass and then snagging that onside kick out of midair. Yeah, a couple of good catches tonight. Yes, he did. So it'll be third down. Matt Jones looking in the end zone. That's a touchdown. That's Smith. He was covered by Gabe Franklin. And we're going to get a little celebration penalty. Gabe Franklin on the coverage. Jones fakes to the left, and then he comes back to the right. He's got a wide open Smith. Gabe Franklin just bit on the out route, 
Smith came back to the inside, gives him a little stare, and then somebody got flagged for illegal celebration in the end zone. Well, the crowd's not happy with it. That'll move the extra point try back to the 25 for a 35-yard try. 40 to 14 now, in favor of Arkansas. And the kick is good. So 41-14 is our score in favor of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Wayne, why don't we take a look at our Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Day. And this is going to feature Ryan Dinwiddie going to Billy Wingfield and Wingfield with a very spirited effort here to wrestle the ball away or at least maintain simultaneous possession of the ball. And that was one of the big gainers and the real positive <laughs> things that happened in the first half. He said, look, it's mine. I got it. That is your Idaho Lottery lucky play of the day. Yeah, Billy Wingfield fighting all the way. And you can't get lucky if you don't play. So No question. There you go. Is that Powerball is up to like $80 million. I wonder if anybody won it tonight. Hey, you see some dejected Broncos right there, David and Michael, Jerry Smith. That's not what they expected coming down here. So Carlson will kick off again. We've got 321 to go here in the ball game. There's the scoring drive. 10 plays, 52 yards, the big play, though, the fake field goal. Here it comes. A little swift kick. Picked up by Cameron Merritt, and he is stopped at the 29-yard line. So on the return team, but not necessarily a returner. Well, he's a linebacker. Yep, but he got the ball and did what he had to do. Broncos have possession. That's the second time he's touched the ball tonight. He had that fair catch on a popped-up kick in the first half. It's a shot of Cameron. Big hitter. That guy can oh, lay yeah. it, too. Oh, yeah, he can really lay some wood on you, can't he? Downey Heck in there, along with Matt Strophus. So we've seen the last, I think, of Brock Forsey here tonight. Maybe not. Wide open. That's Billy Wingfield making a couple of moves. And he loses the helmet, but he holds on to the ball and he's into Arkansas territory at the 47 yard line. I got it. That guy's a gutsy little kid because, you know, he could have gone out of bounds and saved the hit, but instead he stepped in trying to get a few more yards and ran right into some pursuing Arkansas defenders. And here's the move you're talking about. Excellent move to the inside. Then he makes another one to the inside. Maybe he wished that he hadn't. If I'd seen that train coming, I would have tried to avoid direct, but that's me. Yeah, he didn't see the train. <laughs> you got to look both ways. Screen. Donnie Heck has it. And Heck running a little bit too far laterally. He needed to just cut that up north and south, and you know, because of the speed. I mean, I'm just uh, so impressed with Arkansas speed. Yeah, and again, that's just something you, you can't emulate in practice. You don't see that every day, so in practice or in a, another game type situation, he might be able to cut it out and pick up some extra yardage, but not against this defense. Nope. But he did pick up some positive yards. So it'll be second down and seven. Again from the shotgun, B.J. Rohde. And B.J. over the middle, throwing, in, and it's intercepted. That is Robinson with the fast football. Lorenzo Robinson. Caught that one. He actually caught that one right on stride, too. <laughs> that one was just thrown too low. A little underthrown, and Robinson picks it off. Broncos going for it all. And Robinson comes up with the pick. So Arkansas has the football to the 32-yard line. 
Ryan Sorenhan now back in at quarterback. Guess the threat is over, huh? Must be. Hands it off. Here Here's it is the interception. Again, yeah. He just tried to rifle that thing in there to Gilligan, but an excellent read by Lorenzo Robinson. He just steps right in front of it. Yeah, what BJ's been doing so well, Larry, is he's been leading receivers, and that's all he had to do. He had Tim Gilligan wide open down there, and all he had to do was lead him, and, and yeah. he would have had six. Gilligan had three yards on his defender, so. That was one mistake that BJ made, and I'm sure he looks at that and says, I wish I had that back again. to about the 39-yard line. It'll be third down. Clock just running now. That's Kyle Dickerson, number 29, in at the oh, tailback position for Arkansas. So we're under a minute to play here in Fayetteville. Boise State down 41-14. to throw. It's picked off, I believe. Mock tier nope. Clay. Mock tier Clay did get it. I couldn't see the ball in his hand. Yeah, he, he caught it. He was yeah. trying to run with it. He couldn't get his footing and fell down, but he did get the pick. Good job by Mock tier Clay to come up with the interception. Mock tier Clay, a transfer who redshirted last year, came from Arizona State, sat out last season, and comes in as a junior this year. He's out of Long Beach. Total Broncos, 28 seconds to go in this ball game. And I think they want to go down throwing. <laughs> really do. Yeah. They might. We'll see. Have Billy Wingfield in motion. BJ steps up, beats the pressure, throws it to Wingfield. Wingfield trying to stay in bounds. Can't do it. Momentum took him out of bounds at the 38 yard line, but it also stopped the clock with 18 seconds to play. So the Broncos still trying to put something on the board here. Again, B.J. Rohde did an excellent job of stepping up away from the rushing outside ends into that pocket, found Wingfield, who ran a very good route, and then, again, stayed in bounds, trying to grab a few more yards. He's played hard tonight. Yeah, he did. I mean, the only thing that took him out of bounds was momentum. Had he had another foot or two of, you know, sideline, he probably would have gathered himself up and taken it in. Here comes the outside blitz. Rody going the other way, complete to Tim Gilligan. Gilligan drops the ball. And let's see who they call. Uh, got knocked out of bounds, luckily. Yep, it did. I wasn't sure if uh, Arkansas had dropped on it or not. But it'll be Boise State's ball at the 25-yard line. As both players die for this ball, and I, I'm not sure if this is stripped out or he just drops it. He just dropped it. Well, there you go. It's been that kind of night. And then they, the two players coming after it knocked it out of bounds, luckily for the Broncos. So eight seconds to go in the ball game. Time for maybe one, two more plays for BSU. They've got a first down. And from the shotgun. Arkansas with a player in the end zone. Pass on an eight. Boy, I tell you what. That's it right there, Burn. Who is that? 22? That's Bua. Bua still in there. And that's going to be it. So that's going to do it for tonight. Arkansas winning this ball game 41 to 14 over the Boise State Broncos. Team's going to shake hands at center center field and Jeff Caves will, in a moment, try to get a word with what's got to be a very dejected Dan Hawkins. I don't think he expected anything near well, what he, happened here tonight. Not only dejected about the game, but dejected he's lost a starting quarterback. But on the other hand, he's got to like what he saw from B.J. Rohde taking over here in the second half and the way he played and the things he did. There you see Houston Nutt walking over, played most of his first team all night long. But a very good lesson to learn here tonight. You just cannot overcome the kind of turnover performance that happened here for the Broncos in the first half. 
I mean, I think with those two late picks there, that's got to be nine, maybe ten turnovers in this ballgame. Well, guess who had more total yards in this ballgame tonight? Yeah, we, we Boise, saw the tail of the tape. The Broncos are ahead by a little bit. Yeah, Boise State 358 to 345. And there's B.J. Rohde. Good job. You know, with a, with a week under his belt, he'd be a lot better. All right, Jeff Caves has got coach. Jeff? Mark, uh, tough loss to take, but... Um, you felt you were getting back in it at some point in the second half? Well, our guys never quit, and I got to give them that. You know, unfortunately, we just had disappointment after disappointment from the first block, you know, to the turnovers, to, to Dinwiddie going out, and, and our guys didn't quit. And I got to give them credit for that. That doesn't mean there's moral victories, because there isn't. We, we got beat, and uh, we got beat bad, and we got to rally up next week, but our guys never quit, and I was proud of them for that. Surprised uh, that Arkansas defensively came after you so fast and furious, maybe showing too much respect. No, I, I, I wasn't surprised. That's kind of their style, and they got after us a little bit. And unfortunately, the game got out of control, and it was tough to tough to equalize things. But, you know, I, I gave them a lot of credit. They played well. How does this team change? What do you talk to them about with a new guy under the center for, who knows, six weeks or longer? Do you have a talk about it, or you just let it take place? Well, we talked about even last night. You know, heroes are made when adversity strikes, and you got to be able to have courage. And it uh, doesn't matter if it's a World Trade Center or, or football, and, and we got to rally up. You know, BJ showed he can do some stuff. And, uh, you know, football's about adversity. It's about injuries. And, and our team's got a lot of heart. They'll be back. All in all, how would you grade it out? I mean, you certainly want it to be different, but... Well, I'm pretty, I feel pretty bad right now. I'd say it's an F. I mean, I'm proud of our guys for not quitting, but... You know, overall, when you get beat like this, I mean, it's an F, and that's the way we look at it. We'll, we'll take our lumps and, and move on. All right, Hawk, thank you very much. Okay, Wayne, we'll uh, end it here and send it back to you, Wayne. All right, good enough. Thank you, Jeffrey Caves. That's going to do it for right now. Stay tuned. we got more of the postgame show coming up. I do believe we'll be trying to talk with maybe B.J. Rohde, but that does it for now. 41-14, the final. Arkansas wins it here in Fayetteville. Really?